this how we rock. Friday night, got a rest in the morning. Hit the block, check him down. We go at it till about four or five o'clock. Warfare, got my gear. I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it, how we walk it. Yeah, this is how we rock. Hey, I'm a workaholic, but I'm playing with me. Play with me. Ay, no breaks, do this till the death of me. Death of me. I'm with Elohim, careful what you say to me. Better watch your tongue. We've been the chosen ones. I heard you claim to be. Yeah, yeah. What do you got? Hey, what do you got? What do you got? This talk is cheap. What do you got? You see me sick. Yeah, we got that remedy. What do you got? Hey, what do you got? Heard you got that kill for me. What do you got? Cause I need help. What do you got? Cause talk is cheap. So I dedicate to do the every week. Yeah, we not moving corners. So they thinking that we weak. Yeah, now we get it twisted. Hey, don't sleep. We the sanctified. We pull up to your hood to clean the sheet. Yeah, yeah. And I'm blessed. Blessed. Wolfie on the press. Yeah. All I do is raving. Praying for the rest. To the east from the west. From the west. On a quest. Never rest. About that work. Dog about it. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Sabbath morning. Rise and shine. Hit the block. Make it hot. Shake them down. We go at it till about four or five o'clock. Warfare. Got my gear. I'm prepared for the op. And we talk it. How we walk it. Yeah. That's just how we rock. Friday night. Got a rest. In the morning. Hit the block. Shake them down. We go at it till about four or five o'clock. That's a watch. Watch a doctor head chop, body drop. Get the mop. This a jam. This a bop for the flock. Top of top. How much love? That's a lot. On the quest, not a yacht. Got a Glock. It don't pop. That's a prop. Never stop. Ain't no fear in the air. Like your spirit watch. We just pick a corner. We any money on. From here to California, people up at this corner. Corner Comic-Con sliding like a veil. Your bells. If you try to play the profits, you gon' play yourself. Saturday to day to day, we on the way with hell. Big soldier, we take orders like okay, what else? Check the stats, all facts, never cap. We Be everywhere we at, on the map, in the trap, me and Jock, back to back, boost black, script strap, this is with that, this and that, Friday night, take a nap, we wake up, it's a wrap. Sabbath morning, rise and shine, hit the block, make it hot, shake them down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock, warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op, and we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, that's just how we rock, Friday night, got a rest, in the morning, hit the block, shake them down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock, warfare, got my gear, for the op, and we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, this is how we rock, Sabbath morning, rise and shine, hit the block, make it hot, shake them down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock, warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op, and we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, this is how we rock, Friday night, got a rest, in the morning, hit the block, shake them down, we go at it till about four or five o'clock, warfare, got my gear, I'm prepared for the op, and we talk it, how we walk it, yeah, this is how we rock.
that's when it sounded. <gasps> hey, my team rowdy. Yeah. My team do a bliss every county. Uh, my guy put a price in your past the head, and I'm pulling up for the bounty. bounty. Bishop on deck. Face Jerusalem. Men Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Heavenly Father, the God of our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, we come to in the name of you, Son Jesus Christ, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for another Sabbath. Thank you, Father God, for the unity of the brotherhood. Thank you, Father God, for providing a place, a safe place, where we, come, where we can come together and fellowship in this word of you, Son Jesus Christ. We pray for the bishops, the deacons, the captains, the officers. We pray for the leadership of our URC, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for putting the spirit on these men, Lord, to spread the gospel in the forefront of the earth. We pray for the soldiers, the men, the women, the children. We pray, Father God, for all those that are sick in the midst of us, Lord. We pray for a mighty healing, Father God. We pray, Father God, for the 12 tribes who are scattered in the forefront of the earth. Father God, thank you. Thank you for using IUIC for thy glory. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you, Father God, for doing a mighty work in IUIC, Lord, that we have the opportunity, Lord, to go out there and preach the gospel. Lord, as these men go on the front line, we ask you, Lord, you send your angels to protect these men. Do not let no harm come to thy prophets. Heavenly Father God, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to help us to endure to the end as it's getting harder and harder and harder, Lord. Help us to endure, not only to endure, Lord, to overcome, because you said those who endure to the end, they're going to get the kingdom. Help us to overcome our personal sin. Help us to overcome, Father God, the wickedness of America. Lord, they got a lot of evil out here, Lord. Protect us from all this evil, Lord. Protect our children from all this evil, Lord. Especially our children. That's going to those public school, Father God. May you have mercy. Have mercy on us, Father God. Let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 Father God, we pray for the destruction of our enemies. We want vengeance on our enemies. Those who hate us. Those who want to see us, Father God. We pray for the destruction. Lord, don't forget they are your enemies just like they are enemies, Lord. Destroy them, Lord, that they may never rise up again. Thank you, Father God. It's in the name of you, St. Jesus Christ. We ask you, Father God, you bless the, our, our, our drink and our, our bread. It's in the name of you, St. Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. Amen. Men Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, and salute. Salute. Down. Face sisters. To the daughter of Sarah, we say shalom. Oh, praise. Oh, praise. Brothers, you know what Deacon Laba say? We in the building. Um, brothers, get a pen, paper, the Bible, the apocrypha. Take some good notes. Bishop got some butter for you today. I'm not telling what he got. But I'm telling you, he got some butters. Make sure you take some good notes so you can go over them again. That's some good stuff. 
Uh, hey, we welcome uh, Bishop Kanai back. Always. We welcome the mighty Dick and Abiel back. And uh, we had to welcome our, our brother, man. Hey, we haven't seen that brother in a while, man. Captain Chanel. Brother, welcome back, man. Good to see you, bro. Good to see you, brother. <laughs> Captain Chanel. Can you please, can, can somebody please uh -uh, look at the, where's the camera? Thank you. Jeez. Captain Zakar, welcome back, sir. Up with Sumo Sai. Who else we got over there? Captain Ina. Captain Ina, you was here last week. Uh, who, who got the end over there? Captain Azariah, welcome back, sir. And Captain Howell. Captain Howell, welcome back. And all you brothers that visit us, we appreciate you, man. Keep coming and support. Keep coming and get the border. That's where the border is at, is in Atlanta. Hey. <laughs> You know, Labai Malaka is mad right now. Labai, it's okay. <laughs> Bishop, you ready? Oh, praise it. Shalom, brothers. Shalom, sisters. How y'all doing? Well, I'm tired. There's a group of old people out there calling me names. I'm like, who are these old geriatric niggas out here calling me names? So what the hell is this? Come over here, you old coward. Come here. I just saluted them. They, it was a rally, wasn't it? A rally? It like but there's only like two or three of them out there on beach lounge chairs. I'm like, what the hell is this? It was comical, very comical. Hey, check, check, y'all hear me? Hey, shalom, Israel, Most High, Christ, bless how we do it. Hey, all praise to the Most High. I got my glasses back. I misplaced my glasses last time I was here. But I found them, y'all. I found my glasses. Always a pleasure to be here. Again. Atlanta hospitality or Riverdale hospitality, there's no there's no comparison, man. Y'all got it y'all on deck. Oh, That's the first good thing you said about Riverdale in a long time. Oh praise. All right. Well, today's lesson we're gonna talk about wickedness, the grain of evil seed. Now y'all class stirred me up today. I y'all that class I didn't know so many people were stealing in IUIC. Brothers you thought was in the spirit, you find out are not in the spirit. Hey, hey that's why uh, Paul said they are not all Israel. What? Mm-hmm. There you go. Now what you, all brothers can do, we pray they all repent and get themselves uh, situated, get themselves right. But some brothers are CGR. Can't get right. That's some brothers. Some brothers. Let's open up. Who's reading for me? You're, you there? Who's reading for me? Do I have a reader? Yes, sir. Okay. Hold on. Let me. Let's open up with 2 Kings chapter 17 and verse 13. I got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of videos. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through it all. I'm going to have to skip through the notes. You know, once you get started putting the class together, you just be all over the world. Second Kings 17 and 13. Second Kings chapter 17 and verse 13. Yet the Lord testified against Israel mm -hmm. and against Judah by all the and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways. Turn you from your evil ways. So that goes for back then, it goes for us today. Go ahead. And keep my commandments. And keep my commandments. Go and, ahead. And my statutes mm -hmm. according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. So just as it was true back then, it is true for us today. Nehemiah 9.26. Nehemiah 
Nehemiah. Chapter 9, verse 26. Nevertheless, they were disobedient. Nevertheless, we as a nation, as a people, were disobedient. Go ahead. And rebelled against thee, mm -hmm. and cast thy law behind their backs. Cast thy law behind thy backs. For example, thou shalt not, what brothers? Steal. Steal. And we said, ah, to hell with that. Go ahead. And slew thy prophets. And killed the prophets. Slew the prophets goes in there. It always starts off with hatred first. Like the geriatrics crew out there. It starts off that way. They, the spirit of hatred, then it leads to the spirit of murder. That's what it means by and slew thy prophets. Go ahead. And slew thy prophets, which testified against them to turn them to thee. Mm -hmm. And they were wrought great provocation. And they wrought great provocation. Give me Daniel 9 and 10. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 10. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 10. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Now, all these verses that we're reading, every man and every woman here listening, those online, Shalom brothers and sisters online, take it to you, take it to heart. Don't ever read the Bible and say this only applies for that brother or that sister. No. When you hear these scriptures, you hear these lessons say that goes for me. That will help all of us. Because even as I'm going through the lesson, it pertains to me too. Read again. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his way, to, excuse me, to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Come up. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. Y'all see that line right there? Yea, all Israel. It didn't say some. It says all Israel. That includes me and you, all of us. Read again. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. Go ahead. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Because we have sinned against him. So now, what is, we're going to discuss in brief, the curse that is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, we're just going to discuss in brief, Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. You know, I heard, uh, uh, I was watching Captain O'Shea. Hey, get me Deuteronomy 32, 26. A theologian named, what's his name, Eric Mason. He said, Deuteronomy is not a book of prophecy. These urban apologetics are stupid. Get me Deuteronomy 28. Now, Hosea pulled Deuteronomy 18, 18, which is perfect about Christ. Here's another one, Deuteronomy 32, I think, is it 16 or 26, 26? Deuteronomy, 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. I said, I will scatter them into corners. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. So Eric Mason, my brother of the urban apologetics, if Deuteronomy has no prophecies in it, what is, what is that talking about? Read it again, Yuri. I said... I will scatter them into corners. Remember, all of Israel came out of Egypt. We're in the book of Deuteronomy. We all came out of Egypt, walking together, walking to the promised land. Read it again, Yuri. I said, I will scatter them into corners. Mm -hmm. I will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. When did our remembrance cease from before men? Because everybody knew about the children of Israel. When we walked through the ranks of the Amalekites and the Canaanites, they said, those are the children of Israel. But now... He says there's no, stop, brothers and sisters, stop listening to these Christians. They don't know the Bible. Let me help y'all out. We them guys. <laughs> we the prophets. <laughs> Read that, I mean, Yuri, Deuteronomy 28, 15. Let's get, let's get back to it now. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, mm -hmm. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. All these curses. Let's read some curses in brief. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Can you put that picture on the screen for me, Alicia? Read again, Yuri. I'm sorry. Thy sons and thy daughters 
shall be given unto another people. You bring me down to the bottom. You covering up the yokes of iron. Bring me down to the bottom. Elisha. Or just move me. Go ahead. Read it again. I'm sorry. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Give me the next picture, please. Now, I want you to look at this picture here. You see, they're going to take the picture, right? The sister didn't want to be in a photo. The slave. She's, these are slaves. Look what the Arab guy is got in his hand to do to our sister. Do y'all see that? Can y'all zoom in on that? He's going to whip her. This is an actual photograph. Pull back. Yuri, one more again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. When it says no might in our hands, no economic might, no military might, and no political might. So that's slavery. Okay. Give me the next. Read on. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land. Now write this down. This is colonialism. This is an example of colonialism. Verse 33. Read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So, let's go through these images. This is in Rwanda, where they got our people picking coffee. And then they send the coffee out to be processed in America or Britain. Then they sell it back at an exuberant price. Next picture. This is all, neo this is all new colonialism. This ain't the old time. This is current. Okay, this is Kenya. Export, tea export. They pick the tea leaves. Then they export it to America or Britain. The America or Britain processes it, then sells it back at an exorbitant price. Next picture. Again, Kenya, getting tea. Next one. Now I want you to look at this. Okay, these are in the mines. Mining for gold, diamond, or amethyst. Okay, or bauxite. Next one. Look at this. How many sisters want to work in a mine with a baby on your back? This is for you complaining sisters out there. Always something wrong. Well, how about you take your behind to Africa and do that? Some of you got little cushy jobs in corporate America. I know. You don't dare do this. What's something you got to go on? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I'll be able to talk. Hey, right now these sisters looking at this like, hell no. <laughs> But this is what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of y'all need to go over there and see what daily life is like. You got it nice over here. How many of y'all know about central heat and air? That's a part of this. We live like that. You go over there, ain't no vents in the house, y'all. Listen, your sweat is what's going to cool you off. Mm -hmm. Or you got to blow on each other. Give me the next picture. This is a 12-year-old boy. Now, some of, how many of y'all got sons? Our, little, our sons ain't done a lick of hard work a day in their lives. Not like that. The most they get is sweep the floor, mop the kitchen, throw out the garbage. That's the most. They ain't doing this. Give me the next one. Ain't no babysitter, sister. Ain't no babysitter. This is colonialism. Give me the next. Was there another picture? Yes. And is it, look at she. What is she? Eight. He might be twelve, maybe. So Yuri, read that again. Read that again. Verse thirty-three: The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Because European nations eat that up. Those resources do not benefit any of our people on the continent at all. Is all for the benefit Britain, America, or their allies? Do I have Yuri? And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And thou shalt be only, notice that, brothers, oppressed and crushed always. That's why I got modern pictures. In case y'all think, well, we're not going through that right now. Our people are still going through this. Okay, read. Verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad. I don't know about y'all, but I get mad when I see this, okay? Because as long as one of us is a slave, none of us are free. Everybody understand that? 
So, oh, that's just them over there. That's your brother. That's your sister over there. Read it again, Uriam, sorry. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Mm -hmm. From there, from there. Give me uh, verse 37. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. And thou shalt become... Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Yuri, uh, Elisha, I mean, Elisha. I, I, there's a, a, a section. I don't know if... I, yes, yes. Can we zoom in on that? That's what I forgot to read this. Zoom in. And then we're going we're gonna to raise it up. Yuri, can you read this quick? Yes, sir. Diamond. Africa is one of the largest diamond-producing regions in the world with significant exports from countries like Botswana, South Africa, Namibia, and Angola. It's Namib N Namibia. Namibia and Angola. Read. Gold. Several African countries export gold, including South Africa, Ghana, Tanzania, Mali, and Burkina Faso. Next one, number three. Emerald. Zambia is significant. Excuse me. Zambia is a significant exporter of emeralds and considered one of the top producers globally. Tanzanite. Tanzania is the primary source of tanzanite, a rare blue violet gemstone, and it is primarily exported from there. Ruby. Mozambique and Madagascar are notable exporters of high quality rubies. Sapphire. Madagascar is known for its production and export of sapphires, including blue, pink, and fancy colored varieties. Next, Garnet. Namibia and Mozambique export various types of garnets, including the famous Demantoid garnets. Amethyst. Zambia and Namibia are known for producing and exporting high quality amethyst gemstones. Next, come on, y'all. Avocado. African countries like Kenya, South Africa, and Tanzania export ec organic avocados. Now, some of you are aware of some of those diamonds and luxurious di um, jewels we just read about. Now, this gets into the uh, foods that some of us eat and love to eat. Go ahead. Mango. Countries like Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. Côte de Lavoie. Côte de, de Lavoie. Did I say that right, Malachi? Oh, I'm good. Go ahead, go ahead. Côte de Lavoie and Senegal are known for exporting organic mangoes. Pineapple. Ghana and Mozambique are major producers and exporters of organic pineapples. Papaya. Organic papayas are exported from countries such as Cameroon. Notice everything that export. Export means it's going out of Africa. Out of Africa. Go ahead. Nigeria and Uganda. Passion fruit. Kenya and South Africa are known for exporting organic passion fruits. Sweet potato. Organic sweet potatoes are exported from countries like Nigeria and Uganda. Green beans. Kenya and Ethiopia export organic green beans. Okra. Organic okra is exported from countries like Cameroon and Nigeria. Bell peppers. Countries like Morocco and Tunisia export organic bell peppers. Baby corn, Kenya, Senegal, and... I chopped it off. I'm sorry. All right. So now verse 37, verse 37. I'm showing y'all how the curses of Deuteronomy are real. Verse 37. Verse 37. And put the images on the screen. Thank you. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. So that verse explains loss of identity. Like we read in Deuteronomy 28, I mean 32 verse 26 a few minutes earlier about our remembrance being taken from us. Our people don't know. You ask a black or Latino, who are you in the Bible? That's, that's the face you get. Next picture. The confused look on, I'm a child of God. Who? Which one? Name them. A uh, child of God. That's not a race. That's not a people in the Bible. Who are you? Uh, next one. They I'm black. Brother, I am black. Give me the next one. Verse, uh, uh, bear with me a second. Give me verse 64. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there... Thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, 
even wood and stone. Right. Hey, so you know what I forgot? Verse, let me look. Let me look at it. Let me look. We read verse 33. But there's another one that talks about oppression in the app. Anybody see? Oh, verse 29. Let me hear verse 29. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Give me the next image. Yes. Here it is. The history of black America from the 60s, the 80s, and today. The same thing, protest, protest, protest about racial discrimination. Next picture. Okay. Next picture. Okay. So again, so Deuteronomy 28 explains or um, surmises as slavery, colonialism, loss of identity, and oppression. Those four things sum up. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 60. Everybody got that? Write that down. Write that down. Everybody got it? All right. Give me the next book. Give me the book. Give me the book. They didn't get it? All right. Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68. In summation is slavery, colonialism, loss of identity, and oppression. Those four things sum up the whole, all the curses of God. Those four things. Churches don't want to talk about it. Well, guess what? We going to talk about it! Now, here's a book. Let's take a look. Yuri, can you read this? Yes, sir. The Land of the Heart of Livingstone, or The Genius of the Bantu. Now, the, Bantu, the term Bantu is the term that they call the sons of Shem, the Shemitic blacks on the continent of Africa. You got two groups. You got the Hamitic, Hamite blacks, and you have the Shemitic blacks. Everybody with me so far? The Bantus are the ones we come from. Get the year, Yuri. You read the year at the bottom? 1920. 1920. Let's go to page 31. I want just the highlighted areas. It is allowed that groups of Israelitish peoples have from time to time journeyed into the upper Nile country. Y'all see that? Jump down to the next highlight, please. The contention has been made that the extraneous element of the Bantu was derived from tribes of Israel. Can I get a bomb right there? Ooh. Can I get a bomb? What is that, firecracker? What is that? Somebody got smacked over there? Wow. Read it again, Yuri. The contention has been made that the extraneous element of the Bantu was derived from tribes of Israel, which were first carried away to Babylon, as related in the scriptures, and who, afterward, in whole or in part, migrated through Egypt into e e equatorial, equatorial, equatorial Africa and through mingling with native tribes. See that? Through mingling with native tribes, that's the Philistines, the Canaanites, Jebusites, whatever names they got now, they don't no longer call them those names now. But we mingle with the Nilotic tribes. We had babies with them. Read that again and through. And through mingling with native tribes, upon whom they imposed much of their own religion and customs, gave rise to the peoples now known as Bantu. Y'all see that? So that's where we come from, that group right there. Everybody see that? Now, I didn't write that book. Eric Mason, I didn't write that book. Your slave master wrote that book, bro. I'm just bringing it out. That's all I'm doing. Hey, give me the movie clip. Give me the movie clip. I hope I don't get a strike. Hey, you too, Mr. White Man, please don't give me a strike. I'm just doing it. This is a, this is a, a trailer, Mr. White Man. Put the trail up on the screen. Y'all remember this back in the day? Play it. Of mine, 
So now, so now, you might ask, how many of y'all saw that movie? Raise your hand if you saw that movie. Now, I love that movie. I saw some videos of people was mad because Shaka Zulu was making all, whoever he conquered of the African tribe, he made them merge. You might think that's an evil thing. No, it was a good thing. He helped fight off the British for a long time. Because imagine if they had all stayed in those individual groups like the BHI today. Like the BHI today. Give me the next, give me the book, give me the book, give me the book, give me the book. I just happen to be reading through this book. I, I got books I ain't be reading, so I just happen to be flipping. Read that, Yuri. The Flaming Torch in Darkest Africa. By who? By William Taylor. That's white man. D-D-L-L-D. Okay, give me the next picture. That's the, that's the copyright. Y'all read the year, Yuri. 1898. 1898. Eric Mason, your slave master put this together. Let's see what your slave master said. Let's go inside. The Hebrew nation are at present scattered over the face of the habitable globe. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 2864, right? We read that. Now watch this. They are numerous in some parts of Asia, particularly the Turkish dominions. Various countries in Africa contain a large number uh -oh. as Egypt and Ethiopia. And it is computed that there are 400,000 in Morocco, Algiers, and Fez. Now let's go to the next page. Let's zoom in to the highlighted area. Pay attention. The custom to this day of some of the tribes of living in booths constructed from the branches of trees at a certain season of the year, observing ceremonies identical with those of the children of Israel. The liberation of a cock in the wilderness to carry away the transgressions of the people. The practice of circumcision. So general among the Zulus. Among who? The Zulus. Among the Zulus. Seem to link them with the period following the exodus. Ah, y'all see that right there? Go ahead. The traditional history of Abyssinia. Abyssinia is the Ethiopians. Go ahead. Connects it with that of the Jews a thousand years before Christ. When it records the visit of the Queen of Sheba to King Solomon. So what I wanted y'all to see is that they know that the Zulus are affiliated to the Israelites. They are the Israelites. They know that. Go ahead, what are you going to say? Bishop, you be getting these books taken off the market. We got to start like an underground pre-class like telegram or something where we can order these books. If you don't get this book tomorrow, y'all, it's over with. Y'all realize that, right? From there, let's go to Jeremiah 17.4. Jeremiah. Now, what we read, remember, it said a large number of them are in the Turkish dominions, Algeria, Morocco. Those are what they call the Afro-Turks, the Afro-Algerian, because Arabs took that place over now. But there are remnants of our people there. You just, when you type in those words, always put Afro in front of it. And you'll, say, boop, 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 boop. It'll, you'll see us right there, our people right there. But they keep our people hidden from the general public. So you don't you think oh only Arabs over there? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Our people over there. Read that. I'm sorry. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse four. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So that's what uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, Deuteronomy 32, 26 was talking about. Um, Deuteronomy 28 was talking about. Read it again. I'm sorry. And thou, even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So not only is this prophetic about Jeremiah himself, but it's prophetic about you and I. Go ahead. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Uh-huh. So Christ says something. In order, for us, in order for us to regain the knowledge that we once had, Christ said, go to John 14, 15. Because notice, the Lord said, you're going to discontinue from your heritage. We just read in those books, the white man verified we started to discontinue being intermingled with African tribes native to the land. John 14, 15, please. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, 
Keep my commandments. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And what? And I will pray the Father. And he said, I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. He shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Uh Uh-huh. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Oh, sorry. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Uh Because it seeth him not. Mm -hmm. Neither knoweth him. But ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Jump down to verse 26 just for time's sake. Verse 26. But the comforter. But the comforter. This is the one the Lord said he would give us if we keep the commandments. Go ahead. Which is the Holy Ghost. You want the Holy Ghost? What you got to do, brothers? Keep the commandments. That's right. Come on. Whom the Father will send in my name. And what will he do? He shall teach you all things. The Holy Ghost will teach you all things. Go ahead. And bring all things to your remembrance. Uh-huh. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Girls, we would have lost our, we would discontinue from our heritage that the Lord gave us. The Lord Christ said, don't worry. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. He going to bring all things to your remembrance. Wow, that's some heavy stuff. Give me second edge, just four. Second edge. Y'all, y'all let me know if I'm going too fast, please. Second edge, just chapter four. Let me see what verse I want to start at. Let's start at verse 22. Do I have any more coffee? Cold, this is cold coffee, by the way. Second Ezra, chapter four. Actually, this is not regular coffee. This, what is this name of this? Dandelion coffee. It's like crushed plants and stuff. It's different, but it tastes good. Shout out to Sister Avaya. She put me on to this. Thank you. Um, where we at, Yuri? Second Ezra, chapter 4 and verse 22. Then answered I and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, let me have understanding. Where are you reading? Second Ezra, chapter 4, verse 22. Thank you. I'm sorry. Let me, I'm here with you now. I'm here. I'm here. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Then answered I and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, let me have understanding. So Ezra wanted understanding. Now, he already had understanding, but he wanted a higher level of understanding. Go ahead. For it was not my mind to be curious of the high thing. See that? Because the angel was getting on him. Uriel was getting on him. And so Ezra had to come back and say, it's not my mind to be curious in high things. Some of us be curious with high things. You asking questions like what the kingdom going to look like. How the hell are we going to know what the kingdom going to look like? Right. All we can do is give you a, a, a biblical description. How tall Christ going to be. How the hell I know how, Christ, how tall Christ going to be? I don't know. I don't know. That's too high. We got to wait and see. Let's wait and see. Everybody understand that? So let's read on what Ezra says. Go ahead. For it was not my mind to be curious of the high things, but of such as pass by us Daily, meaning regular things on earth, go ahead. Namely, wherefore Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen. Why is Israel given up to a reproach to the heathen? Go ahead. And for what cause the people whom thou hast loved is given over unto ungodly nations. How come we are given over unto ungodly nations? During this time, brothers, who were we under what captivity? Persian Mede. Who yelled out Greeks? You're strong and wrong. He yelled it out strong, though. If you was on the street, you might have got away with that. But up in here, I tell you, that's why when you're teaching a class of people that already know the scriptures, you ain't going to get away with that. But, eh, no, that ain't right. <laughs> Persia media. Very good. Read on, Yuri. Wherefore, Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen. And for what cause? The people whom thou hast loved is given over unto ungodly nations. And why the law of our forefathers is brought to naught. Our law is brought to nothing. Go ahead. And the written covenants come to none effect. The written covenants come to none effect. Read on. And we pass away out of the world as grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. And our life is astonishment and fear. And we are not worthy to obtain mercy. So Ezra acknowledged how wicked we as a people are. He said we are not worthy to receive mercy. Go ahead. What will he then do unto his name whereby we are called? The name of Israel. Lord, what you going to do with the name of Israel? Go ahead. Of these things have I asked. That's what I want to know, Uriel. He's talking to the archangel Uriel. Go ahead. 
Then answered he me and said, the more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. The more you try to, this is your response. The more you try to search that out, the more you're going to be shocked. Go ahead. For the world hasteth fast to pass away. The world is going by fast. Go ahead. And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. For this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmity. Y'all see that top part? And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. That right there is above our pay grade. That's why the Lord said, eyes have not seen or ears heard what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. It's beyond our understanding, our comprehension. Everybody understand that? Read. Verse 28. But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee. I'm going to tell you. For the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. Evil is sown in the earth, but the end, the destruction is not come yet. Go ahead. If, therefore, that which is sown be not turned upside down. Now, let's read that again slow, Yuri. I want you to pay close attention to that. If, therefore, that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. Now, verse 29 that we just read, there's a lot in there. We're going to peel back the onion. We're going to peel back the onion on that verse for a moment. Read it again, Yuri. If, therefore, that which is sown be not turned upside down. Evil is sown in the earth. The angel tells Ezra, if that evil is not turned upside down, let's pause there for a second. Give me Isaiah 29, 15. Isaiah 29, 15. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. So to them here, prophetically nowadays, is the so-called white man. Read again. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Give me think tanks, Elisha. I want think tanks. Read again, Yuri. I'm sorry. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. So this is a group of people who has counsel that they think the Lord don't see. Go ahead. And their works are in the dark. All the evil that they do is in the dark. This is what they call today think tanks. Where men and women, the smartest of nations, the smartest that go to places like Yale, Harvard, and Oxford, just to name a few, they get the creme de la creme, the cream of the crop. And they, use, they pay them millions of dollars each. I'll give it, oh, oh, I got a story for you real quick. There was a robbery in Manhattan. So my unit was called. We go to the unit. White man. He got beat up and robbed. In his room was books from ceiling to the floor all around the whole building, his whole apartment, huge apartment, books everywhere. Books on the floor, the walls, everywhere. So I asked him, so I smell weed. We all knew it was, he was smoking weed. That's why they robbed him. But I, and I asked him, I said, what do you do for a living? Now, he was either going to say sell weed, which he knew he couldn't say because it would be click, click, or he would have to tell the truth. He said, I work for a think tank. I said, what do you mean? This is yeah, a long time ago. I said, what do you mean, think tank? He said, I get paid to read. I said, you get paid to read? He said, that's what all these books is for. He said, I, don't, I go out of my house maybe once a week to get a grocery or something. I'll have friends come over. I said, and your job is to read books? He said, yeah, they pay me to read. They, they call me. They say, this is the subject we want you to give us an insight on. He said, I work for a very popular think tank. Put a picture back on the screen. The think tanks. This is what they do. And then at the end of the month or two months, they all get together. How can we confound these niggas? Rap music, drugs, feminism. This is how you do it. They read all history books. They search out things you would not believe. They got books we ain't got, can't put our hands on. Negroes ain't never seen these books. Because I was astonished at the amount of books he had. 
So Yuri, read that again for me. Read that again for me. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us? Who seeth us? Who would believe it's us? Go ahead. And who knoweth us? Who knoweth us? That's we are the ones that's doing this. These niggas ain't going to figure nothing out. They can never figure this out. Read. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. You see that part right there? They have turned God's words upside down. That's what the, that's what the archangel Uriel was telling Esdras. He said, if this grain of evil seed be not turned upside down, the kingdom to come will not, it won't come. It must be turned upside down. So now Ezra, Isaiah, I mean, Isaiah is pri- pro- prophesying to us, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Hey, can you put the potter's clay up there? Uh, pottery making, because I know some brothers, some sisters may not know what reference that is making. Okay, put it on screen. You can pick one. Pick a good one. High res. Give me a high res one. Okay. Now, you make these pots through a, what is it called? What's that machine called? It spins. Bam. What's it called? Potter's wheel. And with the clay, you can make anything. Okay, whatever you make, you can undo it too. When you put it, go, hey, go back out. Let me show them the actual potter's wheel. Go back out. Let me look. Oh, it's top, top, or oh, any one of those. Top left, I see one at the bottom where they're actually making it. No, up above it. Yes. It spins real fast. It spins, and you can make a cup or a tray, whatever. And if you don't like it, you can undo it. You can just push it down and because it's real, real soft. It's malleable. Everybody understand how it works? So now let's read verse 16 again, Yuri. Yes, sir. Surely you're turning of things upside down. So they turn God's laws, this whole world upside down. Uh, righteousness is evil, and evil is righteousness. Read again. Surely you're turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. God told Isaiah, telling us, it's like the potter's clay, though. Go ahead. For shall the work say of him that made it, mm-hmm. he made me not? Because we're the work. God made us. Okay, read. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it? He had no understanding. That's what the whiteness says. There is no God. He didn't make me. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Give me Acts seventeen six. Pay close attention. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, saying, what? These that have turned the world upside down are come hither You see what they said about the disciples? They said the disciples have turned the world upside down. Meaning what? They turned it right side up. The prophet's job, the disciples' job, Is all that evil that we see? Turn it upside down, meaning right side up. Does everyone understand that concept? From there, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. So that's our job. We see the evil, we got to turn the evil upside down, making it right side up. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Mm-hmm. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We're not using guns and knives and sticks or bats. Go ahead. But mighty through but God. Mighty? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So brothers, sisters, our job is to pull down strongholds. Christianity is a stronghold. We must pull it down. Islam is a stronghold. We must pull it down. Egyptology is a stronghold. We must pull it down. Feminism is a stronghold. We must pull it down. Everybody see that? The LGBT community is a stronghold. We must pull it down. Just to name a few. Read. Casting down imagination. We must cast down all evil imaginations. You might imagine Jesus Christ is white. Our job is to cast that thought down. You might imagine Christ was born December 25th. Our job is to cast that down using the Bible, of course. 
You might imagine the woman is the head of society. We have to cast that thought, that imagination down. Read. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Our job is to cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, meaning against the Bible. Go ahead. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We got to bring every man, every woman's thought to what this Bible says, to they acknowledge, yes, the word of God is true. Everybody understand that? Give me Isaiah 24 and 1, please. Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. Right, he maketh the earth empty. He's going to wipe these nations out. Go ahead. And maketh it waste. He's going to make it waste. Watch this. And turneth it upside down. Meaning he's going to turn everything right side up. Everybody understand that? Because remember, the wicked already turned it upside down. So now when God turns it upside down, it's going to be right side up. But guess what, brothers? Sisters, it starts with us. The Lord ain't going to do nothing until we get till we hit the boots on the ground. Everybody understand that? He said, I need you to, you men fulfill your role in the street, and you women, you teach them children. You teach them young sisters. Cast down all evil imaginations. Turn every lie upside down. Read it again. Now God's going to step in. Now when the Lord steps in, he says what? Read it again, Yuri. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down. And scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. He's going to scatter the nations in destruction. From there, let's go on back to 2nd Ezra 4. Let's go on back. 2nd Ezra 4. And 29 again. Yes, sir. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down. Remember, the evil is sown. The verse above it says, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not come. Now, verse 29 again. If therefore... That which is sown be not turned upside down. So we brothers, sisters, our job is to turn the evil upside down. Then the Lord will step in. Go ahead. And if the place where the evil is sown pass not away. Meaning made empty, destroyed, like we just read in Isaiah 24 and 1. Go ahead. Then cannot it come that is sown with good. Then cannot the kingdom come. If that does not happen, he said the kingdom cannot come. Don't think we're not going to pay a price for this. Did not Christ pay a price? Did not Paul, James, and John pay a price? They all prayed with their, even Mary and Martha, they all the women of God paid a price. I hope y'all understand that. Read Yuri, what verse you at? Verse 30. Uh-huh. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Y'all see that right there? For the grain of evil seed has been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Meaning, meaning, when God created Adam, he put an evil heart in him. Now you might say, well, why would God do that? Give me Romans 8 and 20 real quick. Romans 8 and 20. Paul told y'all the same thing. Romans. Because you had the question, why did he listen to Eve? Why did Adam listen to Eve? The Most High made it that way. Read that, read. Romans chapter 8, verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity. For the creature, meaning man, beginning with Adam, was made subject to vanity, which means sin. Read it again, read it again, read it again. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Adam was made subject to sin. Go ahead. Not willingly. Not willingly. Not saying, Lord, I want to sin. That's not what Adam's mindset was. Go ahead. But... By reason of him. But by reason of God. Go ahead. Who has subjected the same in hope. His plan was to subject man in hope. Hope in who? Hope in his son Christ. That's his plan. That's what God's plan was from the beginning. Watch this. Watch this. Second Ezra 321. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 21. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. Now watch, I'm going to show you the same thing in the New Testament. Give me the one in Timothy. Uh, is it 1 Timothy 2.11? 1 
Watch this, watch this, watch this. First Timothy. So let the woman. Yes, sir. First Timothy. Wait, 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 wait. Let me look at it. Uh, you know I'm slow. Okay. First Timothy 2. Let me not 11. So let's start at 13. Yes, sir. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Watch this. Listen good. I'm going to show you the same thing is being said. Go ahead. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So Adam was first formed, and then Eve. Then came the woman. Watch this. And Adam was not deceived. That's what I was saying. Adam was not deceived. He was not tricked. Go ahead. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman was the one that was deceived by the serpent. Adam was not. So the question, once again, why did Adam sin? Why did he follow her? Because God put that wicked heart in him and said, you know what? I'm going to listen to her. It's called what we call today presumptuous sin. I know it's wrong, but I'm going to do it anyway. Everybody understand that? That was God's plan from the beginning, and that's what Paul was making reference to. He said Adam was not tricked. So stop saying that, but Adam was not deceived. He knew exactly what he was doing. Okay, let's go on back to 2nd Ezra. No, give me 2nd Ezra 748. 2nd Ezra 7, verse 48. 2nd Ezra chapter 7, verse 48. Mm -hmm. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? So now Ezra is complaining. O thou Adam, what have you done? Go ahead. But though it was thou that sinned, Thou art not fallen alone. Mm -hmm. You ain't fallen alone, Adam. Go ahead. But we all that come of thee. But we all, like, that's why. Remember what David said? In sin did my mother conceive me. All of us are born with that sin nature in us. Okay? Read again. I'm sorry. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone. But we all that come of thee. Read. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time? What profit is it if there be promised us immortality in immortal time? Go ahead. Whereas we have done the works that bring death. We're sinning. We're breaking God's laws. Go ahead. And that there is promised us an everlasting hope. Whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain. We're made vain. Come on. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of health. And mm. safety. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety. Go ahead. Whereas we have lived wickedly. We've lived wickedly. We're not going to attain to that. We're not going to get it. Go ahead. And that the glory of the Most High is kept to defend them which have led a weary life. Mm -hmm. Whereas we have walked in the most wicked ways of all. That's all of us in here. All of, all of us listening. Go ahead. And. That there should be showed a paradise. There's shown unto us a paradise. The king, this is New Jerusalem on earth. Go ahead. Whose fruit endureth forever. Whose fruit endureth forever. We're in is security. We're in a security. And medicine. And medicine. Since we shall not enter into Since it. Since we shall not enter into it. Go ahead. For we have walked in unpleasant places. The unpleasant places is sin. We've walked in unpleasant places. Go ahead. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence. Abstinence means when you refrain yourself from breaking God's laws. Read it again. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars. So those men, those women which have abstained, that's what abstinence means, they have abstained, refrained from worshiping other gods, from dishonoring their parents, from killing, from stealing, from committing adultery, from bearing false witness against their neighbor, they've done abstinence. They've abstained from those things. Read again, read again. And that the faces of them which have used abstinence shall shine above the stars, whereas our faces shall be blacker than darkness. We're going to be in the midst of hell. Go ahead. For while we lived and committed iniquity. For while we lived and committed iniquity, meaning we broke God's commandments, we considered not. We considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Do y'all see that? Don't let a black Hebrew Israelite fool you and say you can sin all you want 
and when you die, you're going to become a baby in the kingdom. That's a lie. Read up, read up bottom part again and, and don't consider what? Not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. You see that? Don't let a black Hebrew Israelite deceive you. You're going to live your life. You're going to live the right life of Riley. Now you can sin, commit adultery, steal, 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 lie, lie, lie. And we're going to still get the kingdom of heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. It says you're going to suffer after you die. Woo! That's some heavy stuff. That should put some fear in you. Let's go on back. Let's go on back. Let's go on back, Yuri, to 2nd Ezra 4. I think it was verse 30. Yes, sir. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much godliness hath it brought up unto this time? Watch this, what I want. Excuse me. How much ungodliness hath it brought up unto this time? Here it comes. And how much shall it yet bring forth unto the time of threshing come? See that? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? What is the time of threshing? Jeremiah 51, 33. Write these down. Write these down. Write in your Bible, too. We're talking about the time of threshing. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 33. Wait, let me get it. Let me get it. Come on. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord of For hosts. For thus saith the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel. Mm -hmm. The daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon. Doesn't say Babylon from back in the day. The daughter. Give me that. Who's the daughter of Babylon? Yuri? Psalms 137. Is it 7 and 8? I forgot. Who is the daughter of Babylon? Psalms chapter 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. Who's Edom, brothers? The so-called white man. Esau, the so-called white man. Go ahead, put him on the screen. Put him on the screen. Don't be scared. Put him on the screen. Some of you sisters see this and you think he's the... Put it on the screen. You think that's the hunk. Oh, he's Brad Pitt. He's such a hunk. Read it again, Yuri. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom. This is the children of Edom. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. Read. O oh, daughter of Babylon. See what God's calling Edom? The daughter of Babylon. Now put America on the screen so you know who's talking about. That's it all right there. I can't get a bomb no more. I can't get a bomb. I can't get a, I can't even get a Hail Mary. What the hell is this? Not that I want one anyway, but. So read it again, Yuri. Oh, daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. So the prophecy says, happy shall he be that rewards Babylon as Babylon has rewarded us, the children of Israel. Let's go back to Jeremiah 51, 33. Remember why we went here. We're explaining the time of threshing. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 33. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. The daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. Go ahead. It is time to thresh her. It is time to thresh. Hey, can we look up the word thresh? You can put down the helicopters on the screen. You can put it on the screen. Let's look up thresh. Can we look that up? Elisha, God, no, we, we tend, we just read, we just read on. And then, and then when you ask a brother, what does that mean to thresh? Mm -hmm. You already read that? Thresh, separate grain from a plant, typically with a flail or by the action of a revolving mechanism. Do we have any synonyms or anything there? You see it, Yuri? Because I don't see too well. No, sir. You might need a video. Raise it back up. Anyway, it's a machine that separates grain from wheat. Everybody got that? So now, here America, the daughter of Babylon, is going to be threshed, wherein God separates the wheat from the tares, the wheat from the, what is it called? The shaft. The shaft. The shaft. Okay. You got some synonyms for me there? Read that, Yuri, some of the synonyms. Beat up. Beat up. Go ahead. <laughs> Clobber. A Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, going to get beat up. Go ahead. Clobber. Clobbered. 
Crush. Crush. Defeat. Defeated. Maul. Mauled. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Pummel. Pummel. Spank. Spanked. Trounce. Ah, that's some good stuff right there. Everybody understand what thrash means, right? Let's go back. He looked up thrash, but it's the same word. Let's go on back. 33 again. One more again. Yes, sir. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. From there, give me Habakkuk 3 and 12. Habakkuk 3 verse 12. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 12. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Hey, let's start up above it because I just like to. I'll just start at verse 10. This is when Christ returns. I'll start at 10. Verse 10. The mountains saw thee. The mountains saw Christ. And they trembled. The nations are going to tremble when they see him. Go ahead. The overflowing of the water passed by. The nations overflowed and passed by. Go ahead. The deep uttered his voice uh -huh. and lifted up his hands on high. Read. The sun and moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thine arrows, they went. The light of God's arrows is the missiles. Go ahead. And at the shining of thy glittering spear. And at the shining of thy glittering spear. That's the missiles, the ICBMs. Go ahead. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst march through the land in indignation, meaning righteous anger. Read it again. Thou didst march through the land in indignation. Thou didst thresh the heathen in anger. Yeah, I see that thou didst thresh, pummel, beat up the nations in what, brothers? Anger. Anger. That's the time of threshing. Isaiah 20. No bomb. I ain't get a bomb yet. Isaiah 21 and 9, please. Thank you. Okay, IT. Okay. Isaiah 21 and 9. Don't take it. You mad at uh, Deacon Malachi and Bishop Kanai? You're going to take it out on me. The hell is this? <laughs> Isaiah 21 and 9. Isaiah chapter 21 and verse 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men. And with lo, the, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. Mm -hmm. And he answered. Wait, 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 21 and 9. Oh, I'm in the wrong book. I'm sorry, Yuri. Let me make sure. Wait, let me look first. I might have given you the wrong one. No, that's it. That's it. Yes, sir. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen. It's falling. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to show you that that's prophecy. Hold that. Give me Revelation 18 to write it down, brothers. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. It's fallen. And it's become the habitation of devils. So just as John the Revelator saw the fall of Babylon, which is a metaphor, a similitude, for the United States of America, Isaiah saw the same thing. Going back to Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you, IT. I appreciate you. You can put it on the screen. Go ahead, put it on the screen. So just as John saw the fall of America, Isaiah saw the same thing. Isaiah 21 and verse 9. <laughs> one more time. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. So he saw the fall of America, the fall of the daughter of Babylon, the fall of Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And all the graven images of her gods, he hath broken unto the ground. God's going to destroy all the images, all the graven images here in America, cast them down. Like, give me the graven image in the Statue of Liberty. Go back to that. In case y'all didn't know it, this is a graven image that nations worldwide worship. They all want to come here and pledge allegiance to the United States of America. This is a graven image. And this is just one of millions that is here. Read. Verse 10. Oh, my threshing. Oh, my threshing. Go ahead. In the corn of my floor, uh -huh. that which I have heard of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have I declared unto you uh -huh. the burden of Duma. Stop! Brothers, who know who Duma is? I went over this three weeks ago. Who is Duma? Huh? Very good. Ishmael. 
Ishmael, write this down. I was at Genesis 25, 14. Yuri, real quick, real quick. Put it on the screen. Read it for me, Yuri. Genesis chapter 25, verse 14. And I'm sorry, verse 13. Okay. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael. The sons of Ishmael. By their names, according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebajoth, and Kedar, and Abdil, and Mipsam, and Mishma, and Duma. Duma, Duma, and Duma. That's Ishmael. So let's go back. You're waiting for Eric Mason to teach you that Eric Mason don't know nothing. Christian apologists don't know nothing. Come on. All praise to the Lord. Isaiah chapter 21, verse 11. Mm -hmm. The burden of Duma. He called up to me out of Seir. Hey, can we put up Seir on the, on the screen? He called up to me out of Seir. Seir. I don't see nothing typing. No, 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 no. Petra, give me Petra. That's the Caucasus Mountains. I need you guys on IT. No, that's a missile. I need you guys on IT. Give me Petra, yes. This is Mount Seir what they call Petra today. It's adjacent to the land of Israel. It was one time called Mount Seir. Can we look up? Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, type in Petra. Let me see what it says. Type in Petra. On the all. Mm, give me the, cl click it. I just want to see if we can get to the point. Uh, uh, El, um, Yuri, do you see the word in there? Oh, yeah, put it on the screen. Look at the second paragraph. The area around Petra has been inhabited from as early as 7,000 BC. Now, nah, that year is wrong, but go ahead. And the Nabataeans might have settled in what would become the capital city of their kingdom. I want you to jump down to number. It says the Nabatians. Down. Jump down. Yuri, you yes, see sir. it? Where it says In the same paragraph. The Nabatians were nomadic. Hey, 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 Alicia, can you highlight it so that brothers and sisters online know what I'm talking about? Down. No. 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 Down. Yes. Highlight it. Highlight it. The whole sentence. Go ahead, Yuri. The Nabatians were nomadic Arabs. See that part right there? Nabatians were nomadic Arabs. Once Esau left that area, the Arabs took it over. Does everyone understand that? Let's go back. Woo! Took me a few minutes, but I had to get there. Go back to Isaiah 21 and 11 again. Yes, sir. The burden of Duma. The burden of the Arabs. Go ahead. He calleth to me out of Seir. He calleth to me out of Seir. That's where the Arabs dwelt. Go ahead. Watchmen, what of the night? Watchmen, meaning the watchmen are the prophets. What of the night? Go ahead. Watchmen, what of the night? Go ahead. The watchman said, the morning cometh, and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. Watch this, here come. The burden upon Arabia. So not only is God prophesying about the fall of America, now he talks about the Arabs. Read again verse 13. The burden upon Arabia. In the forest in Arabia shall ye lodge, O ye traveling companies of Dedanim. Dedanim also goes right back to Genesis 25. Deda was also one of the sons of Ishmael. Go ahead. Verse 14. The inhabitants of the land of Timah. Timah was another son of Ishmael. These are still the Arab nations. Go ahead. The inhabitants of the land of Timah brought water to him. That was thirsty. Because when Babylon falls, a lot of them are going to flee to Saudi Arabia. And it says what? Read it again, Yuri. The inhabitants of the land of Timah brought water to him that was thirsty. They're going to be in the desert thirsty. They're going to need the Arabs' help. Because the Arabs, go ahead, it's going to say. Read. They prevented with their bread him that fled. Come on. For they fled from the sword. They fled from the swords. Pay close attention. Go ahead. From the drawn sword. From the drawn sword. Going into these missiles. Go ahead. And from the bent bow. The bent bow with his ICBMs. Go ahead. And from the grievousness of war. War is going to happen. War is going to be upon America and the Arabs. Go ahead. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, within a year, according to the years of an hireling, 
and all the glory of Kedar shall fail. All the who is Kedar, brothers? Ishmael, the Arabs. Go ahead. And the residue of the number of archers, the mighty men of the children of Kedar, shall be diminished. They're going to get wiped out. Go ahead. For the Lord God of Israel has spoken it. Who said that, brothers? The Lord said the Arabs are going to be wiped out. They ain't taking a damn thing over. Hey, don't get mad at me, brothers and sisters online. This is what the Bible say. That's Bible. You mad because your preacher never told you nothing. Some of y'all in the ghettos having sex with the Arabs, having little Negro Arab babies. Sister, that little Arab child going to get taken away. I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you what the Bible say. Sorry, not sorry. Thank you. Let's go on back now. The second is just four. Yuri, what verse were we in? We were at verse 30. Read again. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness hath they brought up unto this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? And how much, we well, see that? And how much shall it yet bring me? It's going to get worse until the time of threshing come. Go ahead. Ponder now by thyself. I want you, so the angel says, Ezra, I want you to ponder on this. Think about this. Meditate on this. Go ahead. How great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed have brought forth. He tells Ezra, I want you to think about from the time of Adam until the time of threshing, how much grain, what does it say? Grain, how much great fruit of wickedness. Read that again. Read it again. Read it again. Ponder now by thyself how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed hath brought forth. Now the question might be, how much fruit of wickedness has come forth? Well, let's just take a look. Give me 1 Timothy 1 and 9. You can get mad at me. This is all in love. I don't hate the Arabs. My job is to prophesy and tell everyone what's going to happen to the Arabs. Okay? Everybody understand that? Oh, you guys are racist. You just hate. No, we just prophesying what the Bible say. That's all. Where are we at, Yuri? First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Oh, so brothers and sisters, listen good. Remember what we read earlier. We got to turn everything upside down. So now it says, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Read, Yuri. But for the lawless and disobedient. Ah, for the lawless and disobedient. Let's pause right there. Give me Exodus 20, verse 12. All I want is verse 12. Exodus 20, verse 12. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and mother. We don't teach none of y'all up in here to disrespect your father and mother. If your father and mother is that bad, go away. Just move away from them. Why are you still in the house with them, eating their food, bothering their white Jesus on their walls? If you know you broke, you can't move out of mommy and daddy's house, then you need to sh shuff up. That's a Hebrew word, shuff up. Shuff up. Give me 2 Timothy 3 and 2. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. Give me Titus 1 verse 16. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Many of us profess we know God, but in our works we deny him. Go ahead. Being abominable and disobedient. And being abominable and being disobedient. Was there more, Yuri? And unto every good work, reprobate. And unto every good work, reprobate. Let me give you an example. Play the video. Put the video on the screen. Now, this is a young lady dealing with her friend's mother. Many of you saw this video. Show up the right Show up the right Oh, serious? Stop playing with me. Stop playing. 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 Stop play
So now, she gets killed. The sister gets killed. Now, I'm not gloating at that. I'm not gloating at that. But they all say, you know, I'm going to tell you about black people. Anytime you, no, let me just show the video. Give me the next video. Put it on before I say it. I want you to listen to how they describe her. New at 11 family members confirm this is the 15-year-old who was found shot to death inside a Newcastle County apartment overnight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joe Holden tonight. Police are still not saying very much about what they think happened. But Eyewitness News reporter Matt Pichillo has been pushing for answers. He's live outside the state police barracks. Matt. Well, Joe, I also talked to the victim's family. Her brother tells me that she was a loving sister, someone he's going to miss every day. Now state police are working to figure out exactly what led up in the moments before that gun was fired. Family of 15-year-old Imoni Rivers Boyd says she was taken from them too soon. She was found shot dead just before 10 o'clock Saturday night at this apartment complex on Bennett Court in Newport. And it was just full of cop cars. A neighbor shared this image of Newport police responding to a frantic 911 call shortly after the fatal shooting. I think about her parents, you know, how they must feel and just how she lost her life so young. On Sunday, we found crime scene tapes still left behind. Neighbors say they heard loud music on the first floor apartment when the gun was fired. Kids had a party and then it just got out of hand. Later in the evening, a woman who was at work at the time came home and found the girl not breathing. She just came outside and screamed like she's dead or something. So it's really sad. And neighbors also tell us that 15-year-old victim did not live at that apartment. She was only there for that party. Police tell us so far no arrests have been made. Reporting live in Newcastle County, Matt Petrillo, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you for that. So live she report. was such a loving, beautiful young woman. Black people. That's why when our people get on the news, I don't listen to y'all. I know you're lying. You're lying. She was such a good person. Okay, yeah, right. The devil is a liar. Here we go back. Read it again. First Timothy one nine. First Timothy, chapter one and verse nine. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. For the ungodly and for sinners. Give me Second Peter three and seven for the ungodly. Well, I want is verse 7. Second Peter, chapter 3 and verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Reserved unto fire? Go ahead. Against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. First John 3 and 4, for sinners. What does it mean to sin? Many of our people don't understand the terminology sin or sinners. First John chapter three and verse four, whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. Now I'm going to give you a brief example. Give me a short, give me the short. It should be, uh, yeah, put on the screen. Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate it. Does this really mean that God rejects Gentiles and only accepts Jews? Absolutely not. This is a misunderstanding of God's character. God is a God of love and he desires all people to come to repentance. He is not a respecter of persons and his offer of salvation is extended to Jews and Gentiles alike. The judgment placed on Adam and Eve was a curse that would affect all of humanity. The Masonic prophecy was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not because they were better than other people, but because they were chosen by God to be the lineage through which the Messiah would come. The fact that Jesus was crushed for our iniquities and chastised was so we could have peace was not because he deserved it, because he loved us so much and he took it upon himself to take the punishment. So no, God does not reject Gentiles and only accepts Jews. His now, what did Jacob not? What did she not use in her conversation, brothers? The Bible. The Bible. That's a, a norm for Christians. They never use the scriptures. 
And if they ever pick up the Bible, they will cherry pick. Now, give me the one about first Malachi. Malachi 1 about Esau. Let God be true, but every man a what? Liar. A liar. Black Christian woman, use a liar. With your slave talking, black lip having. Come on. <laughs> Malachi chapter 1 and verse 1. The burden of the word of, excuse me, the burden of the the burden of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Yet I love Jacob. Yet I love Jacob. And I hated Esau. God said he hates Esau. Hey, we ain't making this up. No. Go ahead. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste. Go ahead. For the dragons of the wilderness. Come on. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. Whereas the white man says, we are impoverished. Go ahead. But we will return and build the desolate places. Brothers, when did they rebuild the desolate places? The Renaissance era. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. Come on. And they shall call them. And they shall call them. You always want to stress them. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Uh -huh. And the people. And the people, the people, the people. Man, woman, boy, girl. Come on. Go ahead. Against whom the Lord have indignation forever. Whom the Lord has righteous anger against forever. How long, brothers? Forever. Forever. Ever, ever? Forever. We're going to say this. Hey, real quick. Give me Hebrews 12, 16. I'm going to tell you, bro. The world would like to believe that the Lord has this thought of harmonious uh, excellence in the world. And all people are the same. And everybody loves everybody. But realistically, that ain't how God thinks. That's why that sister didn't use the Bible. Let's see how the Lord feels in the New Testament. Because that's what they'll say. Oh, that's the Old Testament. Hebrews 12, 16. Read that. Let's, it, see, if, let's see if God's thoughts towards Edom has changed. Read. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Come on. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. Or profane person. Read. As Esau. As who? As Esau. As Esau. Come on. Who for one morsel of meat. Sold his birthright. Sold his birthright for a morsel of uncooked meat. Read on. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing. The blessing, because yeah, Jesus is about mercy and blessings, and he loves everybody, right? Come on. He was rejected. He was what? Rejected. What? Rejected. He was rejected by God. You ain't changing the Bible. Read on. For he found no place of repentance. He found no place of repentance. No place for him. Come on. Though he sought it carefully with tears. Even though he was crying. He was in tears trying to get repentance. None was shown for him. God ain't changed. He, he said, oh, Lord, I changed not. Hey, we're still talking about ungodly and sinners. Let me show you another, another lovely Christian sister. Give me that next one, Instagram clip. It's an Instagram clip. Now, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you have access to it. Give me that. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This is our lovely black sister. She left her baby at home so she could be on social media and party. Go ahead. <laughs>
that's the that's the queen. The black when I say the black woman is God, that's her. That is her. The Christian black woman is God. For her, for the, the queen knew of Nubia, the Nubian queen, just to be on social media and to get her groove on, she will allow her daughter to die. Give me the next video. There's another, there should be another one. A woman is in the car. There's a sister in the car. I don't know if they took it down. Give me, the, let me see the next one. Uh, no, no, I think they boofed it. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. That's it. Another queen, another Christian queen of the universe, sister. Watch this. Wait, don't, don't go in the house yet. Why not? Hey, listen, go on to the, just go sit on the porch. Hey, listen, what do you think you do? Wait, wait, pause, pause, pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. I got to tell you what's going on. I got to tell you what's going on. She dropped her kids off at her mama's house. Mama is the grandma. So the, ma the grandma says, okay, can y'all go stand over there? She says to her daughter, let me talk to you about what's going on here. Now rewind, rewind and go back to the beginning. I just had to fill in the gaps for you. Go ahead. Hey, babies. Wait, 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 I forgot. Her new boyfriend said, I'm not being a stepdaddy to some other man's kids. She got three kids. The new boyfriend said, I'm not going to be a stepdaddy to your kids. Go ahead. Why not? Hey, listen. Go on to the, just go sit on the porch. Hey, listen. What do you think you're doing? I'm dropping them off. For good. Listen, I made a younger guy. Oh he don't want no God. kids. Oh and he don't want to, listen, he don't want to deal with them. Can y'all hear it? And so I'm dropping these kids off so me and him can live. Can you home. turn it up and rewind it? Because nobody can hear Rewind it and turn it up. Playing with the sound. Hey, babies. Wait, don't, don't go in the house yet. Why not? Hey, listen. Go on to the... Just go sit on the porch. Hey, listen. What do you think you're doing? I'm dropping them off. For good. Listen. I made a younger guy. Oh he don't want no God. kids. Oh and he don't want to... Listen, he don't want to deal with them. And so I'm dropping these kids off so me and him can live our life. We want to travel. We want to explore the world. And I can't do that with kids. Oh I can't. I cannot believe. It's time for me to be happy. And I just want to be happy and stress-free without these children. That's all I want. Then you should ask me, baby. I shouldn't have to ask. You're the grandparent. It's respect, Angel. It's respect. Well, I hope that you respect my decision. On moving on with my life with my new man and no kids. I'm not raising your kids. Well, I'm not either. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you because I'm not doing it. I'm just letting you know right now I'm not doing it. These I'm are your three kids. I'm tired. I'm tired of being a single parent. I'm tired. But she says she's tired of being a single parent. She should have closed what, brothers? Close your freaking legs, sisters. Bitch. Always got your legs open. Then you upset because you got kids. Man, then you want another man to take care of this other nigga's kids. We ain't taking care of your kids. The hell is this? Man, now you mad at us. Close your legs. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Let me tell you something. The other guy, the new guy she just got, she's going to get some more kids by him. And she's going to take him right back to her mama again. And she's going to move to the next dude. The next dude's going to say, I don't want to be a father to you kids either. She's going to, bro, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. Some of these women, some of you, they're going to come in IYC, you're going to marry them. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it's a cycle. Some what of us say he was by the grandmother. What you say? Say it again so nobody can hear you. No, I say some of, uh, Captain says some of us in here was by the grandmother. <laughs> Why you say Captain say? No, 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 he's just whisper that. We, say what you said. I didn't hear what you said. Some of us in here was raised by grandmamas just like what we just saw. So it's not foreign in our community. This is a normal thing. This is one of those uh, underlying hurts and pains and mental issues that we have as a people. Where mama dropped us off and skidded off to go back to the club and grandmama raised us. That's a fact in our community. Hey, uh, like Bishop always said, sisters. 
The minute you spread that legs, you pick your baby daddies. Some of you act like you don't know. Listen, stop it. Stop. Like you don't know who the baby daddy is. The minute you lay down, that's your baby daddy. You know he was a crackhead. You know he was a weed head. You decide to do it. So, so listen, stop. Exactly. Go back, Yuri. Come on. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane. Unholy and profane. Give me Romans 7, 12. Unholy and profane. Thank you. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy. Brothers, sisters, the law is holy. Go ahead. And the commandment holy. And the commandment of God is holy. And just. And just. And good. And good. Give me 2 Timothy 3, 2, please. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Uh huh. Covetous. Covetous. Boasters. Boasters. Proud. Proud. Blasphemers. Blasphemers. Disobedient to Dis parents. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unthankful. Unholy. Unholy. Real quick, Jeremiah 23 12. Let's talk about profane for a second. That's the unholy. I'm telling you what's going to happen. This is the grain of evil seed that's gotten worse and worse. Come on. Jeremiah 23, verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 12. Wherefore, their way shall be unto them as slippery ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein. For I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers, that none doeth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood, and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Now jump back up to verse 11. Verse 11. For both prophet and priest are profane. Both prophet and priest are profane. Go ahead. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Now give me Ezekiel 22 verse 8. I'm talking about profane. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 8. Thou hast despised mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. Now, give me the first clip. Let's play that. Is that it? Let me see it. Go ahead, play. A preacher at East Baton Rouge Parish was locked up, accused of breaking the law and the word he's supposed to preach. Now, this Joshua is a Christian, wait, 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 Christian preacher. For some reason, a Christian apologist never see these guys. They never see fellow Christians that get caught up in the midst of unholiness and profanity. Go ahead. Allegedly stole $100,000 from his employer. The investigative unit and Chris Nakamoto went looking for him at his church and explains how this scheme unfolded. Sylvia Michael, sheriff's deputies say the crime involved reimbursements that Joshua Lamb made to himself, a lot of them. His employer says those payments were illegal and he was arrested for his alleged crimes. Let me say you something. It ain't about where you start. It's all about where you end. For Pastor Joshua Lamb, it ended very badly last month. He got a story. When he was thrown in jail, accused of stealing more than $100,000 from his day job, helping manage the comfort suites off Blue Bonnet Boulevard. It's important that you read for yourself. Because, first of all, your wicked ways. 
Lamb, a preacher of God's word, is accused of violating the Eighth Commandment. Thou shall not steal. He's charged with illegal transmission of monetary funds and theft. I can get my Christmas gift a little early. A quick search shows he has a history of arrests for stealing and forgery. Multiple arrests for theft date back to 2014. So who the hypocrite? So that me, I have to sit there. I, I, I told my leaders, I said, I'm not going to come to my own church and bite my own tongue in my own church. I don't have, I told, I told my assistants, I don't want to see you sit on the side of me, knowing that you ain't really for me. In many of the videos posted online, Lamb summons people from Baton Rouge to appear here at his church, located in a strip mall in Baker. One door leading in, no one there Tuesday. And Lamb did not answer calls to his cell phone. He won't put a time you should try to do right. Some, some, some people be real, we don't even try. It was the vice president of operations at the Comfort Suites that brought Lamb's alleged wicked ways to light. Investigators say Lamb, the general manager of the hotel, issued himself fraudulent reimbursements. The hotel says the reimbursements are always made with a paper check and not through the payroll system. But allegedly, Lamb used the payroll system to send payments directly into his bank account from July 2022 until last month, totaling $100,081.92. I'm getting older and more mature. And because I've been, some, some of us have been like this, I've been a church all my life, all I know is church. So I know what the, how I'm supposed to go for church. But when it comes to real life, Okay, give me, we take that nigga off the screen. But that's your Christian minister. Give me the next video about um, that was unholy. Let's talk about profane just for a second. This is again the queen of the universe, the black Christian woman. Go ahead. I didn't love him. I don't He's a prophetess. Christian apologists, they don't see this, only we see this? Where's the rebuke? What the hell is this, is in church? Are you kidding me, black woman and black man? All right, that's all I want, you can't make this stuff up. Christianity's a fraud. Say it on the mic, nobody can hear you. That was in Haiti, by the way. That is profane. That's that's uh, YouTube, TikTok. Let me tell you something. And what you said earlier, Bishop, concerning these apologetics, they will focus on us because this is the truth. You have this woman pulled out her whole breast in front of everybody for a man to suck her breast, and they see nothing wrong with that. Nothing. That's all right. A man just stole a hundred thousand dollars, and that's all right. But then you weren't about what we do and telling people to repent and keep God's commandments that we're the Israelites. Come on, man. Listen to me. Y'all foolish. If you're in church in 2023, God bless you. You dumb as hell. You stupid. <laughs> you stupid as hell. Exactly. Let's go on back. Man. Yuri, let's read that one more again. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. For unholy and profane. For murderers of fathers. Murderers of fathers. Let's talk about that. Murderers of fathers. Give me the video. Murderers of fathers. Play it. Candace Williams has to look at this spot, the place where his son was killed about two years ago. Put it on. Thank you. Virtually every day. Can you turn it up? Outside his apartment. The shooting happened suddenly as his son was walking down the street to the grocery store. Green camera video from across the street shows a gray Ford Fusion, four-door sedan, pull up next to the 39-year-old Christopher Williams. He turns to talk to them. Then moments later, they fire shots from the car. We've frozen the video before that. I just can't let it go like that, you know. I got to find out who killed my son. His family says Williams was a married father of five, devoted to his children working full-time at the University of Chicago Hospital. His widow, Marquisha, says two years later, she still feels numb over his death. Okay, stop right there. Of- so that's an example of murderers of fathers. Read on, Yuri. 
For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Murderers of mothers. Give me the next video. Murderers of mothers. I'm showing you how all these things, these laws, because that's what Paul's teaching us, applies to our people. Now this dude is going to represent himself in court. This is the first impression jurors received of Ronnie O'Neill, the Riverview man charged in a gruesome rampage that killed his girlfriend, his young daughter, and nearly killed his eight-year-old son. O'Neill, representing himself, shouted at the jury during his opening statement. Stop! And the evidence is Let me tell you something. Sisters will look at a brother like this and go, he's handsome. And Lord forbid if he wears size 14 shoe, she's in La La Land. Whoa! Size 14 shoe? Show me what you're working with. Then he puts her to death. Brothers like this are on site. Captain O'Shea went over a good class. Sisters, you better, f some brothers are on psych meds or need psych meds. But just since he's so handsome to you, he's your type. Now our sisters put to death and the kids too. This is what happens. Because you don't do a diligent search. Murderers of mothers. Okay, that's what's going on. Give me, go back, Yuri. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. For manslayers. Manslayers. Give me numbers 35 and 22. Manslayers goes into manslaughter. Numbers, chapter 35 and verse 22. Write this down. Pay close attention. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight. Y'all see this? But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, meaning hatred, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, meaning he was not waiting for you, he doesn't have hatred for you. This is what manslaughter is. Go ahead. Or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not. Meaning you threw a stone, but you didn't see the brother or sister coming by. Go ahead and cast it upon him that he died and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm. Then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. Read. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood. And the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled. And he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest which was anointed with the holy oil. So if you killed somebody by accident, that's what manslaughter is. You didn't purposely have you didn't kill that brother or that sister. You made an error. You didn't see him. You didn't see her. That person got killed. It says you had to run to the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Read on. But, but if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge. Now, the revenger of blood is the family member. The family member. Go ahead. And the revenger of blood kill the slayer. He shall not be guilty of blood. So God's law was if you stepped out of the city of refuge before the high priest died and the family member who's called the revenger of blood finds you and kills you. There's no judgment on the revenger of blood. Go ahead. Because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return into the land of his possession. All right. So now let's go back, Yuri. Let's go back to where we was at. So that's manslaughter. Okay. Let's go. Give me the clip. Give me the clip, uh, Elisha. It should say two toddlers, two toddlers. Here's another example of manslaughter. Play that. Hey, stop touching the child. You're going to cause more harm than, than there is done already. Do you understand? Disturbing body camera video shows the aftermath of a deadly drunk driving crash in North Las Vegas, Nevada. Now we want to warn you, the video and subject matter in this story may be upsetting to some. On December 11th, multiple 911 calls came in about the massive crash. It's on the street. It's a bad accident. There's a baby laying in the middle of the street and the bomb. 
Callers quickly informed dispatch about the child's severe injuries. Honey, we got a bad accident. A baby's gone. When first responders arrived on the scene, they found two women in the front seat of the totaled vehicle and a child in the back seat. Another child was also found on the ground, decapitated. Who else is in the car? There's a baby back there too. The driver was identified as 25-year-old Kalia Manning, the aunt of the toddlers. Their mother was identified as the passenger, 23-year-old Renisa Clydette Glenn Washington. The children, ages two and three, were both killed as a result of their injuries in the crash. Okay, Later stop it right there. So now, we always get on the white man being the devil. Yes, he is the devil, but before we can deal with the white man, guess what? We got to deal with our own people, okay? So that's called manslaughter. They didn't mean to kill those two babies. They got drunk. Some of y'all up in here, some of y'all listening. You have tendencies to get drunk, and then you want to drive home with children in the car. And unfortunately, things like this happens. Now they're charged with manslaughter, okay? So from there, Yuri, go back again. First Timothy chapter 1. You want verse 10 now, sir? No, I want the same verse. Verse 9. Oh, d- go ahead, read. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers. Whoremongers! A lot of y'all know you a whoremonger. Give me Ecclesiasticus 23. 17. Homongers. Look at you, look at you, look at you. Everybody head go down. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 23 and verse 17. Some of you was knocking boots last night with someone that was not your spouse. Read. All, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Sisters, let me tell y'all something. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Women can get sex, meaning it don't matter what you look like, sis. You ain't got to exercise. No, you don't, sis. No, you don't. There will be a man that will sex you. You can be a fat slob your whole life. There will be a man that sexes you. But there will not be a man that's willing to spend his life with you and provide with you. You can have no teeth or one tooth in your head. There will be a man to sex you. But he will not provide and take care of you all the rest of his life. You can be a drug addict, sister. Oh, yes, you can, if you want to be. And there will be a man who sex you. You can urinate on yourself as you walk down the street. There will be a man to sex you. Men are nasty. Men are disgusting. I'm going to tell you straight. He will sex you, and he will leave you. He will not provide for you all your 16 kids by 16 different men. He will not do it. Read it again, read it again, read it again. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. So now we got the understanding of that. Go ahead. He will not leave off till he dies. Sister, the only thing that can stop a whoremonger, brother, is death. You think your pretty face and your big B, uh, uh, BBL can stop him from being a whoremonger. Sister, let me tell you something. After a few months, maybe even a year, I'll give it a year, Let's, I'll be nice. After a while, the sex wears off. And he's, he says, you know what, I want something new. Someone new. Read it again. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. Go ahead. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, who seeth me? Who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. Mm-hmm. The walls cover me. Wait. And nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men. He only fears the eyes of men, sister. Meaning he fears the husband coming home or the boyfriend coming home. That's the only thing he fears. He don't fear the Most High. Go ahead. And knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. He knew all things ere ever they were created, 
So also, after they were perfected, he looked upon them all. Verse 21. Can you read quick, Jerry? Can you just stop and pause and slow? Come on. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city, and where he suspecteth not, he shall be taken. That's why some of you brothers get caught off guard, because the boyfriend or the husband been looking for you. And then you, fall, you wind up dead, and then we like, what happened to this brother? Little, we didn't know you was a whoremonger, but you got caught, because God sent that spirit to find you. Go ahead. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband. Oh, sister, the Lord didn't forget you. Because just like there's whoremonger brothers, there's whoremonger sisters. Some of you sisters right now, you know that dude you had sex with last was not your husband. Read that again, read it again. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband and bringeth in an heir by another. You bringing a baby by another dude. Go ahead. For first, she had disobeyed the law of the Most High. That law is what, brothers? Thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. Adultery. Read. And secondly, she have trespassed against her own husband. Uh -huh. And thirdly, she have played the whore in adultery Read. and brought children by another man. Give me the next video, please. Give me the next video. Read. Play that. Can you play from the beginning? Come on, y'all. And turn it up so we can hear. You are you should be not the father. And that's for the best. Honestly, it's for the best. Because he has only stayed this long so that he could get whatever benefit he's getting out of it. Benefit? But honestly, what Your Honor, wait, 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 wait. Take no. care of a three-year-old child. I am disgusted that you would perpetrate this lie on this man during your entire pregnancy up through his delivery room, let him cut the cord on a baby. I know you know good and well that wasn't his child. I could tell by the look on your face today. He was more nervous than you were. Sometimes I have to get up here as a judge and give what I think, but right now I'm going to tell you what I think as a woman. Now, you sitting up there and you got a cute face, but you got ugly ways. There you go, there you go. Give me the next one. Now, and brother, let me tell you, I don't care how handsome you look. There's so many sisters is just nasty as all hell. Some of them. Not all of them, but some of them. Give me the next video. Watch this. You can't make this stuff up. She got busted by the wife who came home. Had to run out the balcony. The hell is this? So these are examples of whoremongering. Whoremongering. Let's go on back, Yuri. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. Oh, the homo brother and the lesbo sister. Oh, we know you out there. Give me Leviticus 18.22. Come on, Yuri, Leviticus 18, 22. And get the next video paired up, please. Leviticus 18, 22. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. It's an abomination for a man to pretend he's a woman and to receive. You jailhouse brothers know what we're talking about. I'm not gay because I'm not receiving. I'll just give. The hell is this? From there, and don't nobody... Cut that. Look <laughs> what the bishop's teaching. The hell is this? Give me Romans 1 26, 27. Romans 1 26, 27. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That's for you lesbian sisters. You lesbians. Brothers, let me tell y'all something. If there's a sister struggling in her past from being a lesbian, wait a minimum of five years. There's been situations, one situation, 
where the sister got mad with her husband because he didn't want to wait. She yelled, they can argue, and she's going to tell him, my girlfriend do me better than you. You can make this stuff up. I'm telling you. Just to get under his skin. Uh, read on. Verse 27. And likewise also, the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Their recompense, that judgment for their error, for their sin, is good. Meat means good, meaning death. Okay. Sisters, y'all meet, you see a, a brother, he's just so handsome, sis. He ain't ready yet. Oh, he's ready. We're telling you, he's not ready yet because we know something about him you don't know. You never ask the right question. It's not about how many questions you ask. It's asking the right questions. Like, are you on psych meds is one. But have you dealt in a same-sex relationship is another question. Sister gets married to the brother, and she complains. He never want to have vaginal sex. That's a red flag. Ding, 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 ding. He's very rough in bed. He squeezed my ankles so hard, the ankles is red, the bones is almost broke because he's used to dealing with things like that. He's used to dealing with 300-pound nookers, and here you come at 120, he throwing you around. Bam, slam, bam. Like, why are you so rough? Treating me like that because he's used to Raheem. Give me Deuteronomy 23, 17. <laughs> what you said over there, Zikar? What you said, Cap? Uh, I said he rough with you because he used to dealing with muscle mass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Play that video. The hell is this? And whoever in here lusting, we talking about you. Play the video. Yes. Might have missed this past week, and I mentioned in the opening about Greta. But did you know the climate change cult leader, Greta Thunberg, was arrested following a five-day oil tanker protest in Sweden? Well, clearly she thought oh, she had nothing it. to lose this That's week. Because that, that ain't it. it. Is that what I sent you? All right, give me the next video. That ain't it. You know, the, the, that, that ain't it. Give me the next video. TikTok got mad and cut us. It's all right. Right. Give me the next video, please. That ain't it. That's Greta Thunberg. I'm sorry. You think we're yeah. sinful? Yeah, that's it. Full. You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. Funny. Just this once. You're correct. Do you hear what he said? We'll convert your children. Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it. We'll convert your children. Stop going no more. Someone's got to teach them not. He said, we're going to convert your children. That's the whole agenda of the LGBT community, to get your children adapted to that lifestyle. Okay. Give me the next video. Let me see the next video, please. Started 2.35, two minutes and 35 seconds. Two minutes, 35 seconds. 2.35. Yeah, look at this. Blaring example, drag queen story time. It's happening in Canada and America where some public schools and libraries invite drag queens, some dressed like horned demons, to read to young children. And it's a social deconstructionist agenda. They're using children, little five-year-olds, to accomplish this, and parents are waking up and saying no. When asked about parents' rights, OJ says... Well, actually, in Canada, parents' rights are limited, and children's rights are put ahead. So the child has the right to be protected from the parents, when the parents behave badly. Stop. You heard that? Children's rights supersede parents' rights when they think parents are dealing badly. 
You can't make this stuff up. Give me the next video. Yeah, play that. Northern Kingdom, by the way, go ahead. Online predator in Prince George's County is now behind bars, facing a whole slew of charges. Fox Eye Sierra Fox is live in Brandywine to explain what's going on here. Sierra. Jim, just take a look at your screen. This is 26-year-old Rodney Richardson. He's accused of meeting his victims on a popular dating app, Tinder, and doing horrible things to them. The message to anybody doing online dating or using an app to buy or sell, uh, you know, first do it in a public place, uh, have the meeting in a public place. You know, second thing is tell a friend, a family member, uh, what times you're going to be meeting uh, a person, where you're going to be meeting them, you know, and even maybe offer the ability for them to track your phone uh, while you are uh, encountering another individual that you do not know. We want to warn you, these details are disturbing. According to court documents, Richardson used the fake name Joe on Tinder. Back on February 2nd, a man picked up Richardson and drove him to Horseshoe Road in Brandywine, Maryland. A detective says they stepped out of the SUV to smoke weed and talk. Then shortly after, Richardson allegedly asked the victim for his cell phone. He complied. Then Richardson is accused of taking out a silver handgun, pointing it at him and demanding his wallet. Richardson asked the victim for his debit card pin number, then drove off in his 2019 white Subaru Forester. Days later, on February 12th, Richardson met up with another man he met on Tinder outside a church before bringing him over to his house. Soon after, Richardson allegedly tied the victim's hands, told him to lay down in the trunk, and asked if he had AIDS before raping him at gunpoint. Legal filings say the attacker Stop. watched you can't him make He robbed him and raped him. In the trunk of the car. You can't make this stuff up. Yuri, read it again now. Where we at? Verse 10, 1 yes. Timothy. Yes, sir. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 10. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. From men stealers. Men stealers. Men stealers. Men stealers. Uh, one of you officers, give me another name, a modern term for men stealers. Oh, look. A uh, little light skinned brother. Yeah, what, give me another name for men stealers. Yell it out. Human trafficking, very good. Kidnapping. Give me the scripture. 22.16, you sure? 21, I don't want that one. Give me 24 verse 7. Read that one. 24 verse 7. Write that down, write that down. 24 verse 7. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 7. Listen good. Kidnapping. Human trafficking. Listen. And he took the book of the covenant. Deuteronomy. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 24 verse 7. I'm sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 7. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren, his people of the children of Israel. And maketh merchandise of him. Y'all see that? Maketh merchandise of him. Or selleth him. Or sells him. Then that thief shall die. Then that thief shall die. In the black and Latino community, there's something that's called human trafficking, like Officer Asa said, which is kidnapping. They're kidnapping you to make merchandise of you. A lot of you, sisters be thinking, that's why a lot of you sisters, I know you're, why you'll be carrying guns. I understand. I understand. Give me the next video. Give me the next video. And now to a terrifying kidnapping and hostage situation. It's, it's finally over tonight after three men allegedly kidnapped a San Bernardino County teenager and held him for days. KKL News assignment editor Mike Rogers at the desk now. And Mike, you have a copy of that indictment. The story is, is it's just 
wild if that's the appropriate word. It's just terrifying. You know, I was saying earlier, this is every parent's worst nightmare. Your 17-year-old kid kidnapped off the street and gone for days. I want to show you a new video into the KKL newsroom. We just got this from a resident. This is in Highland. That Jeep that you see going across the screen there, that is the Jeep that allegedly kidnapped this teenager. We were able to speak with the resident who took, whose camera took this video. He says federal investigators came looking for him and asked him to show him the ring cameras, and they found that Jeep. Now, we believe that this is right after the kidnapping where that 17-year-old is in. Uh, the affidavit says that the people in this Jeep intentionally crashed in to the 17-year-old's car and then kidnapped him. I want to come to my computer here because I'm going to show you what happens next. After that, the federal investigators say the victim's mother received a phone call from a telephone number. The caller demanded $500,000 to be delivered to an unspecified location in Nogales, Mexico for the return of her son. They also told her that the kidnapping was the fault of the victim's father. Now, shortly after, a video was sent to the mother's phone in which the son appeared to be reading from a statement and said that this is dad's fault and this is what they're wanting before they'll give me back. Now, that led investigators to Santa Maria. That's where they say the victim was taken to. We'll show you some video because, Pat, early this morning, the FBI, along with uh, authorities in Santa Maria, conducted a search warrant. They burst into the room there, the motel room, and were able to rescue that 17-year-old boy from his captors, the alleged captors, all taken into custody. They even had a gun at the time. Uh, as we come back out here to the desk, Pat, the story of how they were able to track these people down Give is me pretty the next incredible. Video. The FBI... Give me the next video. Next video. The very, I'm still dealing with men stealers. Kidnapping, human trafficking. Go ahead. All of that in a second, but right now, Slidell police are on the hunt for a kidnapping suspect out of Mississippi. Two schools are on lockdown as a result of that search. Now, the suspect was spotted near the Red Roof Inn, not too far from I-10 and Gauze, so Slidell police issued a shelter in place for the nearby Boyette Junior High, as well as Little Oak Middle School. Mike McDaniel joins us now live outside with the latest on this search. Mike, can you give us an idea of what's going on? Hey there, yes, Sharice, that search is happening in a pretty broad area between I-10 and Gauls Boulevard up to the I-12, I-59 split. This includes the neighborhoods of uh, Tanglewood as, as well as Lake Village. So a lot of those folks are on high alert, as you might would imagine, as this search goes on behind me. So take a look at the suspect these authorities are trying to search for. His name is Eric Rawlings Jr. out of Mississippi, and he was last seen wearing what you see in this surveillance video. It's a white shirt, red shorts, and socks with no shoes. This all started when Slidell police got a call from authorities in Vicksburg, Mississippi, about two kidnapping suspects, a man and a woman who both allegedly kidnapped two kids. Now, Slido police were told they were possibly hiding out in the city at the Red Roof Inn, which is just on the other side of the interstate from where we are. Now, that was at about 1030 this morning. When police got there, they found the children, a three-year-old and a five-year-old. Those kids were safe. But police also found a newborn baby who they believe was born within the last day and belongs to the female kidnapping suspect. Now, the baby is at the hospital and said to be doing okay. That woman was arrested, but the man, identified as Eric Rawlings Jr., ran off when police got there. Right now, authorities believe they have him confined in this wooded area. There are canines on the ground, drones in the air, and officers are checking backyards of homes. There are also two schools in this search area. As a precaution, they went on lockdown. Those are Boyette Junior High School and Little Oak Middle. Police are asking folks to shelter in place while they search for this suspect and asking folks to keep an eye on their yards, carports, and even sheds. We're not leaving until we get him. That, that's the bottom line. We're very certain that he's in this area. Um, it's just very dense woods. It's a large area, but we're doing everything we can to get him right now. And police say Rawlings and the woman he was with do not have legal custody of the two kids who were reported kidnapped out of Mississippi. They are now bringing in additional resources, including federal agencies, to help find them. Give me the next. Now go back, Yuri. Verse 10 again. Yes, sir. For whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars. For liars, for liars, read. For perjured persons. Liars and perjured persons. Can we type up uh, perjured pers perjury, 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 perjury. We're going to deal with liars and perjured persons. Read perjury. That. The offense of willfully telling an untruth 
in a court after having taken an oath or affirmation. So perjury is when you willingly make a, you willingly lie after taking an oath in court. That's perjury. So now Exodus 20 verse 16, this is what falls under that. For we're dealing with liars and perjured persons. Exodus 20 16. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So liars and perjured persons fall under that commandment. Okay. Proverbs 17 verse 4 now. Proverbs 17 verse 4. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 4. A wicked door giveth heed to false lips. And a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Y'all see that? And a liar giveth heed to a naughty tongue. Read it again. Read it again. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. So a person as wicked gives heed to false lips, meaning a liar. Then it says, read. And a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. From there, give me Ecclesiasticus 7, verse 13. Ecclesiasticus Chapter 7, verse 13. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, verse 13. Use not, use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. See that? Use not to make any manner of lie, for the custom thereof is not good. Okay? From there, give me Acts 5. New Testament. Because Christian apologists say God does not judge you according to his law in the New Testament. That's not true. This is why we're going through 1 Timothy 1, 9, and 10. And I'm going to show you Acts 5. Read that. Start at verse 1. Start at 1. Acts chapter 5. And read quick, please. Read quick. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it. It brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? To do what? To lie to the Holy Ghost. So this is about lying, lying, lying. Some of you brothers, some of you sisters are liars. Go ahead. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. So what have we learned from this, brothers? Many times or most times when brothers are lying, stealing, doing some kind of wickedness, who's often complicit with him? The wife. Never believe. I didn't know what my husband was doing. How did you get that new brand new car? Y'all bought? I don't know. My husband just came into a lot of money. How? I don't know. She's lying. And God killed husband and wife. That's a New Testament right there. New Testament. Hey, give me the video. Now, this is about liars right here. I want to show you how Christians lie. Watch this. Have you read NIV? Uh, not in this verse. <laughs> Why does NIV change it to 22 from Because they believe it's a textual variant there, so they're going with the other variant. Thank you. So What's that means in this Bible, there was an error. 
in the age. They found it to be an error. No, they, they changed it. No, I'm interrupting. No, NIV shows that, that their research, that this was an error. But you said I right? use the NIV. And you do use the NIV. I, we'll get the video lying, for it. Though. You're lying. Okay, we'll get the video. NIV and McCarthy, they all said that this was a copious error in the Bible. And he brought up a particular question. I used the NIV study Bible to use an answer that I agreed with because wait, wait, it was in line with the scripture. Which study Bible? The ESV study Bible. Oh, he just said NIV. I never said NIV. Well, he just he said, said NIV. He said NIV. 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 Christian, did he say NIV? I used the NIV study Bible to use. I used the NIV study Bible to use. He disagrees with NIV, too. Who does? You. When it comes to that, yeah. He disagrees with NIV. He disagrees with NIV. That shows you how Christians will lie at the drop of a dime to prove their point. Urban apologists, Christian apologists, they all lie constantly and consistently. Give me the next video on perjury. Attorney arrested. It was a stunning few moments in Wayne County. It was a stunning few moments in Wayne County Circuit Court. Only our cameras were there when a criminal lawyer walked in a free man and walked out wearing handcuffs. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Stephen Clark. Only 7 Action News. We're in the courtroom. Investigator Ross Jones joins us now with the very latest on what happened here. It's kind of a surprise, Ross. Stephen, you could spend your entire life working in courtrooms and never see what unfolded today. Attorney David Dunn was supposed to start defending his client in a murder trial this morning. Now it's Dunn who needs an attorney. When attorney David Dunn walked into court this morning, his client was still sitting in jail. Within an hour, Dunn joined him there. Well, we've been presented with a warrant request in this case for the defense attorney. Dunn was arrested this morning in court for conspiracy to commit perjury in his client Andre Collins' murder trial. It was supposed to begin today. It is alleged that Mr. Dunn and Mr. Collins um, conspired to commit perjury to encourage a witness to commit perjury we need an opportunity to investigate that matter he didn't know it but sitting in the back of the courtroom were officers from a joint task force waiting to arrest him before they did dunn wanted to address the court yes. your honor i can't go categorically deny any of these allegations um your honor we were prepared today to go to trial in this particular matter the stunned courtroom sat silent as today's murder trial was adjourned Don left the courtroom being trailed by Wayne County Sheriff's deputies, where he was handcuffed and taken to the Hamtramck Jail. His client, Andre Collins, is already in police custody on murder charges. Prosecutors believe he was involved in the conspiracy as well. Outside the courtroom, tempers flared as families caught up in the murder trial nearly came to blows. The boy did it. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Nah, take that on picture. Today, Dunn and Collins were both charged with one count of conspiracy to commit perjury. Dunn alone was hit with two counts of witness interference, two counts of obstruction of justice, two counts of perjury incitement, and two counts of solicitation to commit a felony. Well, all righty then, thank you. Officer Yuri, let's go on back to 1 Timothy. I'm showing us how these laws still pertain to our people. Verse 10, one more again. Yes, sir. For whoremongers. For them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. So Paul says, this, in case there's any other law I forgot to mention, go ahead. According to the glorious gospel. Wait, the law is what? The glorious gospel. The law is according to the glorious gospel. Never let a Christian tell you God's law has nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a lie. We're reading it right here. The law is according to the glorious gospel. Do y'all see that? Read it again, verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Now let's go back to 2 Ezra 4. I'm going to have to skip a bunch of scriptures for time's sake. Abby, what you posting? Where we at, Yuri? 2 Ezra 4. You want verse 30, sir? Yes, read it again. 2 Ezra chapter 4, verse 30. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness hath it brought up unto, up unto this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth unto the time of threshing come? Mm -hmm. Ponder now by thyself 
how great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed had brought forth. So I gave you an example of how great a wicked seed this world has brought forth. Just gave you a few examples, but there's a lot more. Read. And when the ears shall be cut down. And when the ears shall be cut down, is using like when you go through a, 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 a cornfield and you cut down the, um, the ears of corn. Read it again. And when the ears shall be cut down. Which the are ears represent the people without number. So you got corn, you got the, what is it called? The stalk, right. Like you see there on the screen. Put, put it over here. Yes. Okay, so read it again. And when the ears shall be cut down. And when the ears, which represents the people, shall be cut down. Thank you. You can take it off now. Read. Which are without number. Which are without number. How great a floor shall they fill. How great a floor shall all the dead be. Read. Then I answered and said, how and when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore are our years few and evil? What verse you at? Verse 33. Verse 33. Wait, 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 wait. Give me Isaiah 66, 15. Because in verse 32, it says, and when the ears shall be cut down, which are without number, how great a flaw shall they fill? So when Christ comes, he's going to kill a lot of people. Christians would say, no, he ain't. Here's the proof. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 15. chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. The Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind mm -hmm. to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Watch this. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Watch this. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Christ is going to kill a whole lot of people. A whole lot. Give me Jeremiah 25, 33. And when the ears of corn shall be cut down, which are without number. Jeremiah 25, 33. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 33. D-Dan. No, no, Jeremiah 25, 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Do y'all see what the Bible is saying? Read it again, read it again, read it again. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. God is going to kill millions upon millions of people. That's why I don't see why people play with the Bible. I'm just going to be wicked and the Lord going to forgive me. That ain't what the Bible says here. Go ahead. They shall not be lamented. Ain't nobody going to cry for your dead body. Neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. You're going to be like shit on the ground. That's what the Bible says. That's what dung is shit. That's what the Bible is saying. I ain't making it up. <laughs> Second hundred eight, one to three. Just stinking behind out of here. Second Ezra chapter eight and verse one. And he answered me saying, the most high hath made this world for many. God made this world for many. But the world to come for few. But the new Jerusalem for few. What verse was that, Yuri? Verse 1. Go ahead. Verse 2. I will tell thee a similitude, Ezra, as when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that it giveth much mold whereof earthen vessels are made, but little dust that gold cometh of. Even so is the course of this present so world. So he's comparing it like dust. Rewatch this. There be many created. There's many created in this world. Go ahead. But few shall be saved. Few shall be saved. Christians can't understand. Second Ezra 9, 22. Second Ezra 9, 22. Watch this about the other nations. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 22. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. Y'all see that? The multitude of nations, God said, let them perish because they were born in vain. Read. And let my great be and kept. let my great be kept the nation of Israel in my plan. Mm -hmm. For with great labor have I made it perfect. Y'all see that? The multitude of the nations shall perish. God says they were born in vain. From there, from there. Give me go back to Second Ezra 433 again. Second Ezra chapter 4 and verse 33. How then I answered and said, How? And when shall these things come to pass? Wherefore are our years few and evil? Wherefore are our years few and evil? Second Ezra, no, no, I don't want that one. 
No, keep reading, keep reading. And he answered me, saying, Do not thou hasten above the most high, mm -hmm. for the most highest, for thy haste is in vain to be above him. You can't go above the Lord. Go ahead. For thou hast much exceeded. So Uriel's warning Ezra, you've gone too far, Uriel. I mean, Ezra's in what you're asking. Go ahead. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of these things in their chambers? Uh -huh. Saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? When will the end come? Now that precept, give me that in Revelation 6, 9. So when we die, let you know that you're in your chambers in heaven. And in Revelation, John told you the same thing. Revelation. Remember it said the, the dead in their chambers, the souls also of the righteous asked questions of these things. Saying, how long shall I hope on this fashion? Watch this. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Verse Read. 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? That shows you that when you die, brothers, you don't die. When you die, sisters, you don't die. Meaning the real you. We think that the husk that we're in right now, that this is the real us. This ain't, this is the temporary thing. All these bodies we got go back to the dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But the real you, the real man, the real, real woman, the real soul, the real spirit goes before the Lord. And you are living. Everybody understand that? Okay, for time's sake, I'm just going, just going to jump. Give me Daniel. Give me Isaiah 26 to 11. I'm jumping. I'm just jumping. Is this 211? I'll remember, we're going to these precepts. How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? When will all this evil be over, Lord? And when shall we get a reward? That's the question. That's why when we die, we ask before the Lord, when you're going to bring vengeance on them that dwell upon the earth? When you're going to be, when you're going to bring judgment on America? When you're going to bring judgment on the Arabs? When, Lord, when? Watch this. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 11. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Thy salvation comes? Behold, his reward is with him. He said, Behold, his reward is with him. We want that reward. Matthew 5, 12. Remember what Ezra asked. Remember, he says, when cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? When are we going to get our reward for keeping the commandments? That's the question, Matthew 5, 12. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Christ said, rejoice, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Read the verse above it. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. And persecute you. Christ said, Blessed to you when men shall revile you. If you, brothers, if you ain't got no haters, you're doing something wrong. You ain't pushing the right buttons. Because you, when you're keeping the commandments, you will get haters. Like the geriatric crew out there that hate us, they still out to, Who, 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 Joe, who? We hate you, niggas. Read it again, read it again. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. That's the key. Falsely. When they speak falsely against you for Christ's sake. Go ahead. Rejoice. Re Christ said rejoice about it. Don't get mad. Don't bust a nigga upside the head. Christ said rejoice. And be, you, you, and be what? And be exceeding glad. Why? For great is your reward in heaven. See that? For great is your reward in heaven. Meaning new Jerusalem on earth. New Jerusalem on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where, brothers? On earth. on earth as it is in heaven. But did you finish that, Yuri? For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Christ said they persecuted the prophets which were before you the same way. So that's the cost we have to pay. Everybody understand that? Daniel 7.22. The reward. We're talking about the reward. As you wanted to know, when's the reward coming and what is it? Daniel chapter 7 verse 22. 
Until the Ancient of Days came. Until the Ancient, which is the Most High. Until the Ancient of Days came. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. That judgment is the reward we're going to get. The judgment there is the reward of power, of salvation we're going to get. Go ahead. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Y'all see that? And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Read. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Ah, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Brothers, sisters, we are living in the fourth kingdom. We are living under the fourth beast. Give me the, ah, uh, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Nope. That one right there. Put on the screen. This is an example of the fourth beast. Okay. Watch this. Give me Daniel 7 and 7. Let me show you that. Daniel 7 and 7. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 7. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Actually, let's just jump up. Let's just jump up to verse 1. Verse 1. You can take that off the screen. I'm just going to go to the beast real quick. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Mm -hmm. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. He's going to explain it now. And four great beasts. Notice, brothers, four great beasts. Go ahead. Came up from the sea. Came up from the sea, meaning came up from the people. Diverse one from another. And these four beasts was different. One from another. Go ahead. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Give me the other picture. The first was like a lion. Give me the other picture. Put that on the screen. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Can y'all see the bottom of that? Babylon. It represents Babylon. Keep that on the screen. Go ahead. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked. It beheld till the wings thereof were plucked because Babylon conquered Assyria. Go ahead. And it was lifted up from the earth mm -hmm. and made stand upon the feet. It became a ruler of all nations. Go ahead. As a man. And a man's heart was given to it. Meaning great wisdom was given to Babylon. Go ahead. And behold, another beast. And then another beast came up. A second like to a bear. And a second like a bear. And it raised up itself on one side. Meaning one side became greater than the other. Persia became greater than Media. The Medes came in first. There was a joint union. The Persians and the Medes. The Medes came in first, but then the Persians became greater than the Medes. Read it again. Read it again. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it. And the three ribs. The three ribs, brother. Write this down. Give me, I think it's Isaiah 45, if I'm not mistaken, Yuri. Verse 14. Thank y'all. The three ribs. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 14. Thus saith the Lord. The labor of Egypt. Because notice, look, read verse 1 so you know what we're talking about. Verse 1. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. To Cyrus. That was a king of Persia. Jump back over to verse 14. Verse 14. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt. Write this down. One of the ribs was Egypt. Go ahead. And merchandise of Ethiopia. The second rib was Ethiopia. Go ahead. And of the Sabians. The Sabians. The third rib was Somalia. That's the Sabians. Somalia. Go ahead. Men of stature. Men of stature. Tall. Go ahead. Shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. And they shall come after thee in chains. They shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. Because God gave Cyrus authority. Okay, go back to Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. Persia became greater than Media. Go ahead. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. Egypt, Ethiopia, and the Sabians, which is Somalia. Go ahead. And they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. Devour much, crush the nations. Go ahead. After this, after this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard. The leopard represents the Greeks. Which had upon the back of it 
four wings of a fowl. They had four major uh, groups of them. Go ahead. The beast had also four heads. This is the Greeks' four generals. You had Antioch, no, I'm sorry, Seleucus, Ptolemy, Lysimachus, and give me one more, Cassandra. Thank you. Go ahead. And dominion was given to it. And dominion was given to it. Give me, hey, give me the next picture. Give me the next one with all four. Give me the next one. Yeah, keep that right there. Go ahead. After this, I saw in the night victims, and behold, a fourth beast. Now we're talking about the fourth beast that we're living in. I beheld a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. This fourth beast represents Rome, the Roman Empire. Go ahead. And it had great iron teeth. Mm -hmm. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. When it says, and stamped the residue with the feet of it, I want you to think about that. And stamped the residue. You know how in slavery, remember, I'm just, I'm just giving you an example. When America stamped upon us, what did they do? Not only did they literally put their a branding iron on our flesh to show whose property we was, we were, they also stamped in our minds Christianity, the lives of Christianity. Everybody understand that? So another word for stamped in this verse in the New Testament, they call it the mark. Do you understand that? Put their mark on us. Read it again, read it again, read it again. And Whoever get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Uh -oh. And right. stamp the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. And it had ten horns. Now notice it doesn't give the animal description. Hey, hey, Elisha, type up uh, Daniel 7, uh, the four beasts. Just type it. I'm going to show you what the white man does. Images. Uh, give me the one on the fourth one in. Any one of those, I don't care. Zoom in. Yep. This is what white men does. Y'all see the fourth beast? They got Godzilla. They always do that, and dumb Christians go, oh, see, it's Godzilla. It's the animal symbol. No, 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 no. The Bible tells you. Give me second Ezra 12, 12 and 10. Second Ezra, chapter 12 and verse 10. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle. The what? The eagle. Uh -huh. Whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. Read. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. Now put the one that I did back up on the screen. Put it back. The eagle. The eagle. Now you might say, wait, that eagle got three heads. Because when you read the chapter, go back to, let me look. Hmm, somebody help me. You know I can't see. Uh, I want the part where it said it had three heads. Somebody find it for me. It's right in this. It might be chapter 11. Oh, verse 1, chapter 11, verse 1. Second Ezra, chapter 11 and verse 1. Then saw I a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had 12 feathered wings. The Roman Empire. And three heads. And it had three heads, three major empires, which includes uh, Rome, America, and Britain. Those are the three major heads. Okay. Let's go back now to Daniel 7. Daniel, chapter 7. You want verse 8 now, Bishop? Uh, let me hear 7 again. Yes, sir. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible. Now put the other one up with just the eagle. Yep, keep that on the screen. That one right there. You can move the lower third so they can see the whole thing. Go ahead. Yuri, where are you at? Verse 7, uh -huh. after this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. And this beast had great iron teeth, come on. It devoured, and break in pieces, and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it stamped the residue of us with his feet, meaning it imprinted us with their lies, their philosophies, go ahead. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it was different, put all the beasts back up. 
It was diverse. Put the other beasts back on the screen. It was diverse from Greece. It was diverse from Persia media. And it was diverse from Babylon, meaning different. This last empire. What verse you at, Yuri? It's at the bottom of verse 7. Go ahead. And it had 10 horns. And it had 10 horns. Had ten, let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 horns, which represents NATO. Write that down. NATO, the European Union. Hey, do you got that? The 10 horns, uh, Alicia? Can you put it on the screen? Because John talked about the same thing in Revelation. You got it? He used a dragon, though. He used an example of a dragon. All metaphors, the 10 common markets. Right there, you got Greece, France, Luxembourg, United Kingdom, Ireland, Belgium, Italy, Netherlands, Germany, and them. Now, this is just an example. Because there were 10 made, they are, there's more than that, but there's 10 major ones that the Bible is talking about. Let's go back now to Daniel 7. What verse you at? Verse 8 now. Go ahead. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Write this down. The little horn is the United States of America. The little horn is the United States of America. Go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up. Uh, that right there. America, in order to um, uh, provide themselves a more perfect union, they, de they destroyed the French during the French-American War. They fought against Britain during the War of Independence. Then they destroyed the Spanish during the Spanish-American War. Those are the three they had to pluck up. They plucked up again the French, the British, and the Spanish. That's who they plucked up. Everybody understand that? That's who they fought against. Everybody with me so far? Did you finish that, Yuri? What verse was that at? We're still in verse 8. Go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of men. Meaning they, they had great vision. It was America that had great eyesight, great vision to say, you know what? We're going to create a railroad. We're going to create weapons of mass destruction. We're going to create means of communication like no one has ever seen before. We're going to create ships that can go to the moon. It's America that has created these great inventions. That's what it means. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man. They had great vision. Go ahead. And a mouth speaking great things. And a mouth speaking great means there's no God. And if there is a God, surely he looks like the white man. We're going to go to the moon. Why? Because we are God. That's what they're saying. That's a mouth speaking great things. Man came from monkeys. These are the great things that this horn speaks. We're going to fly above the heights of the clouds. 1903, the Wright brothers. 1969, we're going to go to the moon. Jesus is white. These are the great things the mouth would speak. Okay? So now jump over to verse 22 again. Verse 22. Until the ancient of days came. Now all this that America has done is until the ancient of days came. Go ahead. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And judgment meaning reward. Power is going to be given to the saints of the Most High. The saints are the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me that in Psalms 148, Yuri. The saints, Psalms 148, I think it was 14. Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel are the only saints in the Holy Bible. Everybody understand that? There's no Baptist saints. There's no Catholic saints. There's no Muslim saints. Only the 12 tribes of Israel. There's no Chinese saints. There's no white folk saints. There ain't no uh, Japanese saints. There's no Arab saints. Only the 12 tribes of Israel. Go back to Yuri. Daniel chapter 7 verse 22. Mm -hmm. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high. Power was given to us. Go ahead. And the time came that the saints possess the kingdom that's our reward brothers that the time is going to come when we possess this kingdom on earth everybody see that read read thus he said the fourth beast thus he says the fourth beast 
shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth. Put it back on the screen. Put it back on the screen, Elisha. Nick, the other one. No, no, put, yeah, put it right. Leave that right there, yeah. Read again. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. This fourth kingdom shall devour the whole earth. It goes from Rome to the United States of America. Everybody see that? Go ahead. And shall tread it down. And shall tread it down. And break it in pieces. And shall break it in pieces. Go ahead. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. Put the ten horns back up. Ten horns back up. The EU, the NATO. Are, NATO. Put are, it back on this. Come on, Elisha. Roll with me, bro. Roll with me. Come on. Read. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. That shall arise. Go ahead. And another shall rise after and them. And another shall rise after those ten kings. And he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings. So who's that, brother? Who's that talking about? America, the United States of America. We just read that earlier. Go ahead. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And we just explained that. We just read that. He shall speak great words against the Most High. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. He wore us out in slavery. That's how they wore us out. In slavery, they, they not only enslaved us, they colonized us. They forced us to have a loss of identity, and they oppressed us forever. Go ahead. And think to change times and laws. And then they would change God's times and God's laws. They said, you know what? We know God's law says the month begins on the, on the new moon, which is the dark moon. They said, let's change that from the full moon to the dark moon. I hope I said it right. Did I mess up? They said, let's change that new moon. Mm -mm. No longer will it be the full moon. Make it the dark moon. We know God says the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week, which we call Saturday. Let's make it Sunday. That's what they did. We know the Lord said observe Passover, but mm, I think we should celebrate Easter. And she'll think to change time. We know the Lord says the, the evening and the morning were the first day. Evening and the morning were the second day. Evening and the morning were the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day. But we're going to change that. The day starts with sunrise. No longer the evening. Let's change all of that. That's an example of what they have done. We know the Lord says man shall not lay down with mankind as he does with a woman. Let's make laws to say it's okay in Jesus' name for same sex to get together. This is just an example of what they have done. This goes back to what Ed, the archangel was of the archangel Uriel was telling Ezra about the great seed of evil, of wickedness. Read that again, Uriel. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand. And they shall be, oh, another law, another law of feminism. How can I forget that? Women don't got to be submissive unto the man. To hell with you, knuckles. The woman is over the man. Yay, women rule. Ah! That's white man doctrine. Just like the serpent in the garden. You don't have to listen to him. Here she go. We ain't, I ain't got to listen to you. Okay. Read it again. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. They wore us out in slavery. And think to change times and laws. They changed God's times and they changed God's laws. Go ahead. And they shall be given into his hand. That they is the Israelites and they shall be given into his hand. Whose hand? The fourth kingdom, the fourth beast's hand. Read it, put it back on the screen. The fourth beast. That's what it's talking about. Uh, Elisha. Elisha. The fourth beast. Thank you, Elisha. Woo. And they shall be given to his hand. Whose hand? The fourth beast. Now, Elisha, find me an eagle, please. Come in, and Ezra said the eagle. Give me the United States of America eagle. The eagle. You're Elisha, I want the eagle. You got the flag behind the eagle. Right. This is that eagle. This is that eagle, the fourth beast, Rome, America. Read that again. And they shall be given into his hand until a time. Until the time. And times. And times, plural. And the dividing of time. That's three and a half, 350 years. Some books say three and a half days, but it equals 350 years. 
Go ahead. But the judgment shall sit. God's judgment shall sit, meaning it shall still stand. Go ahead. And they shall take away his dominion. It said they shall take away his dominion. The they is the Israelites shall take away his, the fourth beast's dominion. Go ahead. To consume. To consume. And to destroy and it. And to destroy it. Unto the end. Unto the end. In the yeah, wait, 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 wait. You see that part to consume and to destroy? Hey, Yuri, give me that in 2 Thessalonians. I think it's 2 and 8, if I'm not mistaken. Help me out here. About the spirit of his mouth. What verse is that? 2 Thessalonians 2, it might be 8, 9, or 10. I can't remember. Verse I think eight, it's 8. Sir. Yes, sir. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Who's that? The fourth beast. The fourth kingdom. In Thessalonians, it calls it the son of perdition. It's another metaphor for the same country, the same people. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. See that? Consume with the spirit of his mouth. That's where you brothers come in. We are consuming him with the spirit of God's mouth. The spirit of God's mouth is the Holy Bible. The Bible ain't going to speak for itself. You men must go out and preach and teach the words of the Most High. You understand that? Read. And shall destroy. And shall what? Destroy. Destroy. Go ahead. With the brightness of his coming. Because after we consume this man with the words of God's mouth, Christ is going to come and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. Go back to Daniel 726 again. Now look at the words again. But the judgment shall sit. And they shall take away his dominion. How? To consume. To consume. That's you men teaching the word of God. That's you sisters teaching your children. Go ahead. And to destroy it. And that's Christ. Go ahead. Unto the end. Until the end. Read. And the kingdom. And the kingdom. And dominion. And dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom. Uh-huh. Under the whole heaven. You know what that means, brothers? The whole planet Earth. Read shall be given shall be given to who to the people of the saints of the most high shall be given to the 12 tribes of israel read whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom our kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom go ahead and all dominion and all nations on the planet earth shall serve shall serve and obey him to him is christ we're going to force everybody to bow the knee that's what it's, hey, find me every knee shall bow. Find me that. Find me that. Find me that. Find me that. Christians love this. Come on. Somebody Google it. Somebody find me that. Where is it? Philippians 2.10. Thank y'all. Philippians chapter 2 verse 10. Christians love this verse. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Y'all see that? At the name of, now we know that ain't going to be his name in the kingdom because he has a new name. It says, at the name of Jesus, meaning the word of God. Go ahead. Every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. Of things in heaven. Of things in heaven. And things in earth. And things in earth. Was that the whole verse? And things under the and earth. And things under the earth. That's it, sir. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Give me Revelation 16. I'm going to show y'all something. I'm going to show y'all something. 16 and 9. And read down. Revelation chapter 16 verse 9. And men were scorched with great heat. War. Go ahead. And blasphemed the name of God. This is the white man in all the nations. Go ahead. Which hath power over these plagues. Uh -huh. And they repented not to give him glory. You think the nations are going to give repent and give glory? They're not going to repent and give the Lord glory. It says repent it not. Go ahead. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. America, go ahead. And his kingdom was full of darkness. This is the kingdom full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Uh-huh. And blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores. And repented not of their deeds. And they're not repenting of their deeds. Go ahead. And the sixth angel 
poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Why? And the water thereof was dried up. To do what? That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. There's going to be war, war, and more wars amongst all nations. Read. And I saw three unclean spirits. He said, I saw three unclean spirits. Like frogs. Like frogs. Come out of the mouth of the dragon. That's their political people fight for political reasons. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the beast. And out of the mouth of the beast, they fight for economic reasons. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. They fight for religious reasons. Christianity. Go ahead. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. Why? To gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Now go back to Philippians. Almost done. I'm almost done. Philippians, what you just read again. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. So now it says every knee. We just read nobody's going to repent. So how do you think these nations are going to bow the knee? I need y'all to give me that Revelation 3.9. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. But do lie, there's a bunch of liars. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. He said, I'm going to make them bow and worship. Read it again. Read it again. I'm messing up the words. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Aha. Uh -huh. Was that it? And to know that I have loved thee. Christ is going to make them bow. That's what he's saying. That's what it means. Here's another precept. Isaiah 49, 23. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 23. Listen good. Every knee shall bow, right? Watch this. And kittens shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. Meaning the kings of the other nations and the queens of the other nations. Go ahead. They shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth. They shall bow down to thee. That's every knee shall bow. Go ahead. With their face toward the earth. With their face toward the earth. And lick up the dust of thy feet. And they're going to lick the dust of our feet. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And you shall know that I am the Lord. For they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. We got to wait on the Lord, brothers. We got to wait on the Lord to do this thing. Isaiah 60 and 14. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. The sons of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. That's the white man. That's the Arabs. That's the Chinese. That's all nations on the earth. Read. Read it again. Read it again. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. Shall come bending unto thee. That's every knee shall bow. Go ahead. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves shall down. Wait, wait, wait. They shall what? Shall bow themselves down. They shall bow themselves down. Go ahead. At the soles of thy feet. At the soles of thy feet. Go ahead. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord. The city of the Lord we shall be called? The Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Now go back to Philippians 2. Go back to Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh-huh. That at the name of Jesus. That at the name of the Lord, the word of God, every knee should bow. They ain't going to bow willingly. We read in Revelation, they're not going to repent. We are going to force them with the power we shall be given to bow the knee. You got two, na you got two options, nations. Bow the knee or die. Wait, wait. Ain't, ain't the one that said it in Isaiah 60, I think 10 or 12, something like that. Give me that 60 and 12. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 12. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Do y'all see that right there? Let me tell you, let me tell you. Give me Luke 19, 27. Luke 19, 27. Because some of you like to join with other nations. That's what the Bible says about you too. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. But those my enemies, but those mine enemies, which would not 
that I should reign over them. They will not repent. They refuse to bow the knee. Bring hither. Bring hither. And slay them before me. Slay them before me. That's Jesus. That's the loving Jesus. Go back now. Go back now to Daniel 7. We almost done. Go back to Daniel 7. I know your church ain't never said nothing like this to you. Come on. Where were you? Yuri, Yuri. Come on. Daniel, uh, Daniel 7, where was he at? Verse 27. 26. Verse 26. But the judgment shall sit, uh -huh. and they shall take away his dominion. We're going to take away the dominion, go ahead, of the fourth kingdom, go ahead. To consume. To consume with the word of God. And to destroy That's it. That's Christ coming to, to destroy. Unto the end. Unto the end, go ahead. And the kingdom. And the kingdom. And dominion. And dominion. And the greatness of the kingdom. And the greatness of the kingdom. Under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven. Shall be given. So the whole planet earth shall be given. To the people of the saints of the most high shall be given to the 12 tribes of Israel whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. So our kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom. Go ahead. And all dominions and all nations and kindreds and tongues shall what? Shall serve and obey him. Shall serve shall serve and obey him. Go ahead. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Brothers, sisters, that's what the whole Bible is about. So with that, brothers, never give up. Never give up. All oh, praises, Shalom. Hey, Shalom, Shalom, family, Most High, Christ bless. Let's give a, a hand for Bishop Class again. All praise to the Most High. Let's get on to these announcements. Let me, let me pull it up. One second, one second. Uh, <laughs> hold on one second. Um, all right, let's get the one that was approved by uh, the, the uh, FYFF October 6th announcement, the final. That's last? Okay, yes, sir. Uh, all right, let's go to IUIC Raleigh. We ready with that? All right, I'm going to read it first. Hold on, wait, wait. The prophets of IUIC Raleigh went to Fiesta del... I'm black, I don't know what that is. Uh, Playbo, what they say? Playbo, I don't know. The word of God went out strong, and a lot of flyers were passed. Many people were edified. We pray at least one soul repents. We are in the 11th hour. Play that. Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ. Bless. I'm Officer Hezekiah here with IUIC Rock. Today we went to a La Fiesta del Pueblo. The word went out strong and was great. The Lord got the victory. A lot of people was edified. I'll pray to the Lord. Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ. Bless. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, he's my best friend, too. Hey, all praises to the most high. All right, shout out to IUIC Raleigh. Let's go to the next one. Uh, it's from Jersey. All right, I'm going to read it first. The prophets of IUIC New Jersey continue their mission to wake up the tribe of Ephraim at the 62nd annual Puerto Rican Day Parade in Newark, New Jersey. Our people haven't seen order and discipline in over 50 years until God's army arrived on the scene. All praise to the Most High. The Lord got the victory. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to IUIC New Jersey YouTube and other social media channels. Let's play that video. Shalom, familia. And shalom, Israel. Shalom, Israel. Most high Christ blessed. This is IUIC New Jersey reporting from the Puerto Rican parade. We turned out here and we did a march. So, Lord's willing, our people hear this word and they repent. They repent. They repent. So, this is empowering. It's 
it's amazing to see how beautiful they are prized of what they do, and I find that beautiful. And that's what we need more in this world, people to appreciate and spite for what they love and for what they are. All I see right now is soldiers, soldiers of Christ, walking down, marching, spreading the word. Uh, stand behind us, protect you. Yeah. Stand beside us, respect you. Yeah. But if you stand in the way, then you go on the day when we have to die. Thank you, thank you to the Israel United in Christ. Thank you, thank you for your participation here at the Puerto Rican Day Parade. Yeah. Yeah. When you hear that thunder, it's lightning. Go check on the weather, man. I'm just saying, can't think of a better plan than obeying the land. Hey, all praises to the most high. Shout out New Jersey, Northern Kingdom on the rise. Uh, go to the next one from D.C. The prophets hit the streets for Fiesta D.C. 2023 to wake up our Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters from all Northern Kingdom tribes. Ephraim to Zebulon. Watch as the word went out in the spirit of Acts 2 to push our people to repent. Let's play that video. Shalom, my name is Oficial Nathanael Kong. Soldado Abaya, estamos aquí en Fiesta DC para montar y levantar la Reina del Norte. Allá tienen un gran Santa María. Vas a mostrar él en Lucas 11 y 28, diciendo es mejor para oír la palabra de Dios y guardarla. Shalom. Shalom. 15. Y sus pies. Ajá, entonces, Juan está velando los pies de Jesús. Sigue. Semejantes al bronce brunido. Entonces, Juan está diciendo, están dando una comparación, ¿verdad? Tu casa, abrir la Santa Biblia. Todos los versos aquí, mira lo que la Biblia diga para tu familia. De nada. They originally called this land Arsaret, all right? So when we read like the Jewish and 